Ruin has come to our family. You remember our venerable house, opulent and imperial, gazing proudly from its stoic perch above the moor. I lived all my years in that ancient rumor-shadowed manor, fattened by decadence and luxury. And yet I began to tire of conventional extravagance. Singular, unsettling tales suggested the mansion itself was a gateway to some fabulous and unnameable power. With relic and ritual, I bent every effort towards the excavation and recovery of those long-buried secrets, exhausting what remained of our family fortune on swarthy workmen and sturdy shovels. At last, in the salt-soaked crags beneath the lowest foundations, we unearthed that damnable portal of antediluvian evil. Our every step unsettled the ancient earth, but we were in a realm of death and madness. In the end, I alone fled, laughing and wailing through those blackened arcades of antiquity, until consciousness failed me. You remember our venerable house, opulent and imperial. It is a festering abomination. I beg you, return home, claim your birthright, and deliver our family from the ravenous, clutching shadows of the darkest dungeon. It has been one week since our first expedition. I am happy to say that it was a success, and the mercenaries returned, exuding what can only dis be described as overconfidence. Yes, they did clear the guild of the bandits who had taken refuge there, and on top of it, saved my best scout from an unfortunate fate in the process. But they ought to be wary, for triumphant pride precipitates a dizzying fall. No matter. Our tools and blades already grow dull from the unrelenting humidity of the nearby bog and the relentless rain, and as such, I have decided that it is of utmost importance that their next task be to clear the blacksmith's forge. I have sent a scout ahead to survey the decrepit building. God only knows what evils lurk within. The week has not been eventless. The four mercenaries, the Abomination, the Vestal, the Arbalest, and the Leper, all were busy carrying out their own tasks to prepare themselves for whatever lies ahead and to maintain whatever sanity is still left of them. Abomination, what did you do this week? This week was filled with regret. I allowed my inner creature to escape momentarily and every part of me feels like my skin. It feels as if, as if it's a shell upon the creature that lies within, deep, burning like a fire. I shy away. I dare not make eye contact with the other members of my party for fear of what they may think. So this week has, has left me wandering the woods outside the encampment, trying to find the courage to come back to them, to show them that I am not just a monster. Thank you, Abomination. Next, we have the Arbalest. 
Arbalest, how have you been keeping yourself busy in the past week? Over the past week, I've taken this new thirst from the stress. Just tried to keep myself busy. All I can think about is... <clears throat> I don't... I don't even want to hmm. give the thoughts power. Hmm. Must stack wood, make fire, eat, sleep, and just ready myself. Going through the motions to keep unwanted thoughts at bay. Hmm. It sounds as if there might be something afflicting you, Arbalest. No, just don't even. Don't even talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Next is the leper. The man with the mask. How have you been keeping yourself busy? I've been heavy. Heavy weight upon my shoulders. <laughs> I've been experiencing visions. Visions of the heavens and of hell. That's so bleak ah. and the pain is almost unbearing but between the visions and trying to heal my wounds I've been sharpening my blade and swinging it ever ever more <laughs> that sounds like a bad cough there leper could your condition be worsening Almost indefinitely it is. Oh, thank you. Rest well. The next expedition will be upon us soon. Lastly, there is the Vestal, the holy man. How has he been keeping himself busy? I've been taking time to be in commune with the great spirits. After last time, we were witnessed to Kessel's true nature and I have created a covenant with my belief to rid this world of the darkness that I see in Kessel now and yet I feel my purpose has changed perhaps I've been sent here for another reason for the salvation of a flock that I knew not that I was going to be the shepherd and so I've spent my time in the abbey contemplating and in commune with the spirits trying to increase my resolve and my direction of what I should do next. And I feel that in this time, it has bolstered my strength and, and faith. And and I'm more ready now to face the dungeon and the darkness. The Abbey, Vestal. <laughs> it sounds as if your wits might have left you already, for the Abbey has not been cleared yet by you and your friends. Could it be that this vision of yourself at an Abbey may have been just that? A vision? Did it all happen in your head? It is possible. As I stand outside the abbey, I wonder what has become of my sanity. Thank you, Vestal. All right. So, Higgins wanders through the streets of the hamlet. Now, not many of them have been cleared, so it is very dangerous for him to be moving about. But he comes to you. He finds that all four of you somehow have managed to find your way to the same place. And he says, ah, good, 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 good. It is good to find you all here. And I the hang master. back, I hang back at, at, like, against the wall, sort of just creeping around the corner. Again, sort of ashamed of, of the abomination within me and worried about what they might think. I have word from the master. And he holds out a roll of parchment. Your next expedition is to be to the blacksmiths. The forge will be invaluable for us to be able to renew the vitality of our weapons, sharpen our blades and our tools. You will do this, correct? You seem awfully pleasant about what we are going into. Well, it has only been a week, and you all seem to have your strength and your health. 
If you need a little bit of time, that is no problem. Again, the guild is open for business, and there is going to be opportunities for you to be able to train uh, for the next couple days before uh, before you are sent into the blacksmiths. But I do not want you to delay very long, and neither does the master. For the longer we wait, uh, the longer we risk the blacksmiths being completely inoperable by, by the time we clear it. When do we get to meet this master? You've spoken of now. We've 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 cleaned the other. And again, I sort of look around to the others as I step forward, and, and then I take a half step back. We we've already done one job for the master. When do we get to meet him? Uh, uh w once again, uh, him or her, I, I am not entirely quite certain. For the master remains in their uh, their carriage completely. I haven't even met the master myself, but I do know that they are a person of great importance and power and wealth, which is the reason why you all are here, am I correct? We were brought here from a letter that you wrote. That's the only reason I was here. I feel a small part of me was, was arm-twisted into clearing the last home. It wasn't necessarily something that I came here for, and I think at least the well, I don't know. Does anyone agree with me here? I think the compensation that we've been giving has not been well met in comparison to the, the ferocities that we faced. We barely escaped with our lives in the last encounter. The Perhaps stop. the compensation shall change due to the services we do provide. Now, that being said, I am here to clear this place of evil, but in order to be well prepared, I think we require a little bit more. Well, thus far, you have proven yourselves to be uh, quite invaluable. So, uh, tell you what, I will speak with the master, and I will see whether your request is uh, approved. Now, uh, Vestal, um, it, it does surprise me that you would come to me with this, for the master did specifically spend money out of their own coffers to train you specifically in uh, some sort of new technique, am I correct? Yes, and I, and I appreciate it, but I fear that when I think it will come in handy for uh, the care that I can provide for them as a shepherd and and the other members of my party will, will benefit, but them themselves, there are going to be situations where I cannot be there for them. Hmm. And Arbalist? Do you also feel that your wages are uh, insufficient? <clears throat> to be honest, money doesn't mean as much to me as the idea that I'm going to make it out of here with my wits about me. Hmm. I don't know. I prefer a little bit more, yes, money, but only so that I can maybe visit with a doctor or something. I don't know. <laughs> to me, it's less about the money and why we were brought here. I feel like we were brought here under false pretenses. I'm not a violent man. I was sent a letter that said uh, that said there was something for me here, so I left. And I feel like now something within me, something was forced out that I wasn't quite ready for. And mm. we were made mercenaries of when all we were promised was Perhaps a home? I don't know. I need nothing more than the money required to settle my debts. For I have many debts. Hmm. And if I'm going to make money slaying the demons of the dark underworld, then so be it. <laughs> Indeed. Ah. And well said, Mr. Leper. And as you cough, he backs away. I guess coyly or um, <laughs> politely mm. and uh, takes out a handkerchief and covers his mouth. Very well, yes. Well, uh, now that we are all focused and you all know your places, purposes, uh, mm. uh, sir, uh, Mr. Kessel it was, correct? Kessler. That's the Kessler. second time you've gotten it wrong. Well, it has been a rather stressful week for me, organizing everything back in the camp. My goodness. Do you know, well, and I take a step towards him, a stressful week for you. 
and I pull open my pull up my sleeve and show where my skin has split and where it's been rehealing soft tender flesh where my human skin has begun to remeld you have no idea what that means stressful week and I step back to my corner in the darkness averting <clears throat> his gaze I I will assure you that if you do manage and when you do manage to clear this place of the evils that are within there will be a house available for you and a place for all of you when maybe places to be accepted are difficult to come by without any further ado i think it's time that we get to business again take the night rest train whatever you need to do the guild is available and the front of the abbey is well still a sight to behold but i would not venture inside as we have not scouted it out now we have sent a scout to the blacksmiths which is where you'll be going next and david i would like you to do a 1d hundred roll okay and it's going to be a 50-50 chance. If you get over 50, then <coughs> the scout is successful, and he's able to give you information about uh, what you might see when you get there. But if it's a fail, then he comes back with nothing. Okay. So let's see what happens. I can figure this out. <laughs> Maybe someone else should do it. And then <laughs> sure, all right. Let's give it Harlan. Do uh, 1d100. Deal. 59. 59. So, um, the scout is off doing his thing. It's up to you guys now to prepare for the next um, <clears throat> the next expedition. So, lately you guys have had a little bit of chance to rest. So, each of you are healing five stress, which we did before the game. Mm. Uh, so, most of you should be around five or four, or I think, Carlin, you're at, what, three now? Or? I'm at two now. Two now. Okay. Yeah. Um, out of a potential 10. ten. yeah. And uh, you guys have a chance to uh, use camping skills or go to the guild and train. Let us start with the Vestal. You've already been at the guild this week, but what would you like to do with your last day before going on your next expedition? Um, I think in order to get the uh, full benefits of, of a blessing for the, for the next expedition, I would like to donate my 10 XP to the poor and uh, some people around the village that I think will bolster my uh, ability to, to move forward. I want to make sure my, my health is at maximum. So I'm going to use the, the, the coins that I have to increase my, um, my total health. Perfect. Okay. So go ahead and uh, roll a 1d6. You're at the guild uh, improving your abilities. Okay. Three. Nice medium. Okay. And uh, I'm allowing you, because you have magic as yeah. um, a another bar, you can split that between the two. Right. I think uh, I will actually do two to my health and one more to my magic. So now my magic is a 19 and my health is at 20. Excellent. Okay. And now uh, let's go to the leper. Again, leper. Uh, you can use any one of your camping skills tonight, or if you want, you can go to the guild and either raise one attribute, increase your health, learn a new skill, or learn, learn a new talent. And you're quite quiet right now, Leper. Cat got your tongue. Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. With the leper's tongue. Too funny. You tell a good joke. Thank you. What will you be doing this, e this evening? I would like to <clears throat> spend uh, I would like to raise a skill. Alright, which skill? Wait, raise an attribute or learn a skill? Oh, sorry. Let's raise an attribute. Alright, what will you be raising this evening? My strength. Perfect. Go ahead and raise your strength. That and weird? that's going to be in uh, affecting your damage every time you roll. Uh, I think you have a great sword, right? Yeah. Every time you roll that, it's 3d6 plus your strength. So that'll be very helpful. Fantastic. And next, let's go to 
the Arbalest. Arbalest, mm -hmm. what will you be doing this evening? Uh, I guess raise my health. All right, go ahead and roll a 1d6. And as this is happening, as the evening is going on, the triage tent that is set up uh, in the meantime before the uh, the hospital ward or sanitarium is cleared, or the medical ward, rather, um, you hear uh, one of the nurses in the triage tent uh, has brought a violin, and she's playing it uh, in the night, and it's a <coughs> nice, soothing feeling. What did you get there, David? I'm sorry, my computer's facing up. I'm gonna go off. <laughs> okay, I'll roll for you. What was it, 1d6? A 1d6, yeah. I shall roll for the boy. I shall roll for the boy, just as I would in real life. Two. Two, okay. So he's gonna increase his health by two. And then, uh, lastly, the abomination. How are you going to spend your evening? When Higgins leaves, um, before they all go about, I step forward. I don't know if I have the words to say exactly what I am. And I kind of sheepishly turn away from the Vestile knowing how he feels about creatures of my sort. I need you to understand that what I was back there, it is something within me that I fight every day, but it is not me. It, I pose no threat to you, uh, sincerely. And I turn to the leper, try to match his eyes or meet his eyes in the uh, in the mask. <sighs> it's well. Uh, I... the, listen, there are great horrors in in those halls and in this world, and I am one of them. I understand that, but again, I I apologize. And if it's any consolation, I I feel like I can perhaps ease your minds on it. And I'm going to use a campfire skill tonight, which is anger okay. management. I'm going to take four <sighs> points of self-stress and heal yeah. two points of stress on all companions. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So everyone goes down two, and I'm going to go back up to... Uh, did I heal five Six. originally or four? You healed five. So I would be at one, so now I'm at five. Perfect. Wow, that's very very kind of you. Well, is that what you say, leper? Oh, <laughs> not in that voice. <laughs> that is, there is no. You speak, you speak of horrors, and I know what you speak of, for I too am a horror to those who look upon me. I feel like there's <clears throat> many reasons we were brought together here, and. Despite our various backgrounds, I feel like together we can accomplish what is asked upon us. But I think it is important that you know you can trust me, obviously. For what I am is is, is something not of this world, but... Praises on the Most High. I recognize the words you speak to be my very own thoughts. I have spent the last week contemplating what this means and what we are, why we were brought together. It is true that I fear what is within you, but not for my own vessel, but for yourself, your eternal soul. I mean, the things that you are capable of committing in that form. I must help you through this time. I've been sent here to help you. Kessel, we can do this together. Perhaps that is the case. And if that, if that ends up being what is necessary, then yes. Huh? I just need you to know that to each of you, I'm I'm no threat. I am hopefully soon a friend. <laughs> I feel I feel um, I feel more relaxed around him now, and you can see that in my posture. I'm kind of perhaps on our last night, we should go rejoice and drink and and, and get up, get some something to liven our spirits. Well, I, I don't personally partake, but I, I wouldn't say no to coming along. And I follow next to Vestial, a few feet back still, but sort of nodding. And I turn to the leper and I say, will you partake as well, friend? I'm sorry. My ears are not the same. Partake in... A drink. What? Yes, I will. Thank you for the invitation. All right. So the brothel or tavern is not operational yet. It hasn't been cleared. We don't need a tavern to drink. But there is, keg. <laughs> there is a, uh, a rations wagon 
Ah, brilliant. So you can go mm. to the rations and provisions wagon and... Uh, I imagine it's it's mostly if you wine or something there due to the fact that it would preserve longer. That is a good observation. <laughs> and, and Kessler so. starts feeling more like himself as well and begins walking up straight again. Kessler, do you think it is wise that we procure us some um, provisions such as uh, maybe some more shovels after last time we faced that huge landslide and I, I fear that yeah. the grounds beneath here are not so stable. I know, I completely agree. In fact, and while the four of us are walking towards the rations cart to partake of some wine, it's, it's, listen, this master, it is, does no one else feel perplexed about this? We, we each received a letter from Higgins claiming that these, these home, this was a homestead of ours, something that we could inherit, and yet it seems like uh, upon arrival here we have, we auctioned off as mercenaries and, and, and paid for our dues. I'm not saying it's necessarily bad work, but I'm saying there's a tinge of me, especially after dealing with what we did last week, that something in here feels off, as if we're being abused in some small way. I wouldn't look too deeply into it, Kessler. After all, it's not very often that the lords of these lands call upon the peons that are, well, we, and speak to us directly. They often use their companions, such as G Higgins, Very true. to well, do their business. I don't know about that, but it is evident that we all have our troubles to face, and perhaps the the patron of our services is not ready to share his. Uh, I agree, there's probably something amiss, but it is a noble cause. Fair enough. And and the abomination sort of walks away thinking back on why this affliction has, has come into him, why he is an abomination, and how he was betrayed in the past. And this air of sort of uncomfortableness, this, this unknowing of who the master is, weighs on him greatly. But he shakes it off as he helps the leper bring down a heavy keg of wine from the back of the rations cart. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, just be careful with that, will you? It's, uh, Says the uh, provisions master. Don't worry, do you have any, do you have any glasses? Uh, any uh, large? I, I have some, some, some metal, uh, uh fl flagons. Uh, I guess that'll do. Do you have any salamis or aged cheeses that uh, are very well? Do you, are you looking to make charcuterie, my friend? <laughs> yes. That's how I forget. Uh, if if you'd like to to spend some coin on extra rations, and you're more than willing, I, I but you're more than able. But uh, I, I wouldn't tell the master. I, I think we're supposed to save all these rations until the tavern's up and running. Can I ask you, friend? Is it uh, not uncommon that you need things procured from the blacksmith? Uh, I I we do need things procured from well, the blacksmith. And I, and, I, and I brush his shoulder and I clear some dirt off. I say. Well, it just so happens, the very next place we are going to purify is the blacksmith. So, it is in your best interest to make sure that we leave in a in a in a good spirit, and we are here simply to share our hopes for the future and, and with you. Perhaps you would like to drink with us as well. And I try to open the tap to to, to start pouring drinks. Go ahead and do a fast talk uh, <laughs> communication. <laughs> I was gonna say, it's like that seems like a different game. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> all right. I got a. Persuasion. I got a. Uh, I rolled a four, but I'm gonna go with my communication, which is a zero. Nice. <laughs> Total of four. Oh, and... with with uh, it's three d six. Remember, he did. All oh, right, I did. I did three d six. Oh, you did. I got, oh, you I got, got, a, I got a, a double, or like a a double. What do we call them? Uh, <laughs> Dragon die, the stunt. But we don't. Yeah, we don't even know. So, anyways, yeah, I, I failed. So he looks at you and says, uh, "I let you drink. Uh, you have one drink, okay? But uh, you still have to pay for it." And then I, I, I come in and this the sudden brush waves over my head and I can't control it and I reach for my bow and and I'm about to. No, nice. what are you, son? What are you doing? I step forward to between them as well. So, no, 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 no. And I, I slowly put my, I put my hand on it on the tip of the thing so that even my hand bleeds. I kind of press it in. No, 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 no. And I just bring it, and I, 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 I bring it down, 
and I just say to him, we'll drink as much as we like. Uh, I, I, sir, drink. I'll keep an eye out for the master. Arborist Thank is you. not going to help anything if we pressure these people into giving us supplies meant for other reasons. I... Before he goes away, I'm going to shake his hand and actually give him a gold piece or a coin. And I'm going to focus on the arborist and, and speak to him. Sorry, the stress of our work has overcome some of us. Uh, thank you very much for the wine. Please accept this. Okay, thank you. Thank you. It's very generous. You must understand that if, if the master finds out that I'm I'm giving away rations, I, 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 it's my head. And I interrupt and I speak to the the man at the at the guild. You needn't worry about any of this. We will speak to the master upon his coming, and any quarrels that he may have with you he can bring to us we are doing his dirty work we deserve this drink f f very well f very well sir and he backs away from you particularly leper uh f obvious fear in his eyes and he disappears behind the car you cannot you can't pull your weapon on people because they're not giving us what we want we're, we're meant to be here for a long time you can't force them to give us things I just avoid eye contact with him, and I grab a I grab a mug and fill it with right to the brim. With and I'm going to drink. I'm going to grab you as you try to avoid eye contact and turn. I'm going to grab you by your chest, and I'm going to pull you towards me with might, a bit of anger. Can I use might for that? I don't know. Uh, go ahead and well, yeah, yeah. Because I have a plus four. <laughs> That's why I want to use it. <laughs> All right. Uh. <laughs> Basically, sort of like an intimidate, but I want to grab you. Oh, fuck. And that's <laughs> 12 plus 4, so 16, and I got doubles too. It, it hits. It, it hits his defense. So I grab you, and as you look into my eyes, Arborist, you see like a fleck of red. That same red that you saw of my skin when I turned into the abomination. I said, you will not do it again! And I quickly sort of pat you. Because we need to be here for a long time, Arborist, please. It's, 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 it's not, and I actually take a step back. It's not something that we want to provoke uh, the people. I think, I, I think I, I'll turn in for the night, actually. And I turn away I'm, from the camp. Arbalest, did you have anything to say to that? I just keep on drinking, and I mutter, watch yourself. I won't hesitate. <laughs> <laughs> Kessler, I, before we drink, let us have a blessing on... on of the spirits and I and I, I say tomorrow we face more darkness may our light shine and per pervade through the darkness and, and not let the darkness strengthen that which troubles us and I look definitely at the arborist in the eye and I look at Kessler who's walking away hmm. and announcement. I, I say to drink. announcement from the narrator uh, to be clear an arborist is a person <laughs> who raises trees. Uh, to everyone in the party, if you've been saying arborist, it's my fault. I've been thinking that uh, I was wondering. It was, like, arborist. <laughs> it was a thousand percent my fault. A different procession. I realized it right off the bat, and I was like, I, ah, I was honestly, it. honestly, narrator. The arborist was waiting for a, a moment to say, ah. I don't trim trees. So it's also Kessler, <laughs> not Kessel. So fuck everything. <laughs> Very good. Well, just and as we long call, as we're all on the same page. call the leopard Targul. He has a name. That's true, but it's better to call him the leopard, I think. Uh, Let's call him the leopard from now on. The leopard. Thank call you very much. Whatever you were. As you were. As you were. <laughs> and anyway, so Kessler turns and, and walks towards his, his camp. And as you begin walking away, you see a figure in one of the lone streets of the more um, urban side of the hamlet, between two decrepit buildings, a man stands walking almost aimless towards you. What do you want, man? And you recognize him. He's the same scout that was sent out last week, been sent again to the blacksmiths. How does he look? Hey, he looks fine, healthy, though his face is a bit gaunt. I step towards him. You were sent out to the blacksmith last week. What, what news have you? I, I, uh, uh, there are, there's a presence 
Uh, I can't exactly say what it is, but I... It's all boarded up. I couldn't find a way in, uh, save, you know, breaking down the boards. But I thought I heard something, and I stuck my head against the boards. And I could just barely hear the violins in the distance, but against the boards I could hear something else. A, a muttering, a, a, a chanting, almost. Uh, words I could not comprehend, but when I stepped back from the boards, I... <sighs> I felt that something had affected me, just hearing those mere words. <laughs> calm, calm down, man. man. Is... Listen to me, boy. And I, I take a step forward and I, I grab him by the shoulder. Listen, calm. Calm yourself. It's not going to do any good if you can't if you can't speak or, or relay what you found. The whole point and the purpose of your mission to be sent out there was to tell us exactly what you found. Come. And I lead him towards where we where I just left. And I walk him towards I say uh, gentlemen, this is the scout that was sent out to the blacksmith. He said he's put his he said he's put his face towards the boards that were closing the entrance or covering the entrance, and he said he heard a sound that well, that seemingly made him feel off. And I have him take a seat. Uh, I what he says is true. As far as I can tell, there there is no way into the blacksmiths. You'll have to break down the boards or find some other way in, but there is something or someone inside, more than one. Uh, I couldn't count the voices, but you must not listen to what they are saying, for even if you can't understand it, it it will damage you as it does me. Scout. I must find the provisioner. Scout, take a breath. Take a breath, son. Tell me. How long have you been in this town? Just barely as long as you. I came with the master. Just you, a week you've ago. Never, you've never seen the blacksmiths before. Uh, nay, not up close like that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your efforts. And he puts his hand on the man's shoulder. It's the, but it's a, it's a scaly, almost. Uh. Falling apart, hand. A finger falls off. Plum, plum, plum. Uh, I'll get there if, for you. <laughs> if you don't mind, my, my, uh, my, my scouting is 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 done. I've told you everything I know about the blacksmiths. I, perhaps you can break down the boards if you need to go in there, but otherwise you'll have to find somewhere else. And may, may I please leave? Is there any other way you know of in? You 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 said if we can't find a way to break down the boards, is there any other way you might know? <sighs> Uh, I, I, I do not. Uh, Is there anyone the in closest, town that would know? Uh, nay, I'm the one with the most information. But Do not uh, worry. Do not worry, Kessler. There's always a way in. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Yeah, yes, I think I think you can go. Uh, I thank you. Do sleep well and best of luck on your journey tomorrow. Godspeed. I, yes, you too. I think, um, and I turn to the vestule. I think perhaps you were right, speaking of earlier when you were. Is it not the vestule? It's Vestal. No. <laughs> vestal. I need to write these all down. Um, I turn to the Vestal. And I say, I think you were right when you were speaking earlier. I'm going to procru uh, procure a shovel. And I think perhaps. I think perhaps if each of us acquired something that could be of use. I remember them speaking of a skeleton key at the uh, Provisioner. Something that could open any door. And um, mm -hmm. anti ven holy water, perhaps bandages. I, I think I think if this well, boy I... has any sense of what he's speaking of, there are great horrors that await for us. Oh, yeah. I think that if there is um, followers of, of the darkness down there and they do chant and perhaps it has a, a way of uh, Manipulating our spirits, we should find ways to protect ourselves. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to find some, some wool and maybe some wax that we can contrive some things to plug up our orifice, our ears. I think that's a good idea. I think if you can get something that for each of us, I think that might be something beneficial. Okay. I have this skeleton key from where we were last. I've kept it in my pocket, and furthermore, I've got. A few spare uh, torches. 
They're still wet with oil. They will I think, last. I think we got lucky on our last expedition. Perhaps we should use, uh, get some backups just in case. Uh, some more Absolutely. skeleton keys and some shovels as well. Absolutely. All right, I, I will go and procure the protection for our ears. I will go see the provisioner and, and, and purchase a shovel. I, I think we used the one last time, correct? That is correct, yes. I will do that. Where right. I am, in my accommodations, I also have some bandages and 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 healing potion. Well, wait, you're getting healing potion, Vestal? <laughs> so that... funny when <laughs> yeah, you gotta keep it all. <laughs> so actually, so all you guys have right now is the skeleton key that the leper still has from last time. Um, bandages, as far as if if you are going to be bleeding, I mean, the bandages that you have are just, they're not going to do what the actual bandages in game do. I will show you actually the screen. Um, well, this just kind of provisioner. I was just kind of rolling it, role playing it out as if I had spare bandages because of you don't get playing. to role play in a game like this. It's not a role playing game, you fool. Oh, the uh... I'm sorry. I don't know how I got that mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> this is your provisions list. Uh, so as you can see, you can spend five coin on a shovel. You can buy these bandages, and that will staunch the flow of bleeding. Um, skeleton key from last time you still have anti venom, holy water. So this is what you can purchase. Okay. Is the is plugging our ears going to benefit in any way? Uh, I will say yes. I, I'll give okay. I'll give you guys an extra willpower roll if you know something. Do you need to buy to... that for a coin each or something? I'm gonna say yes I because feel like that makes more sense. Because <laughs> cotton is hard to come by these days. Sure, it's... sure. I mean, you have to use the bandages, maybe. Can I purchase a flask? Uh, you can have a flask. Twenty-two okay. gold pieces. <laughs> I will gold, purchase <laughs> gold crested. I'm gonna purchase hey, just... a shovel for five and a piece of wool for my own ears. So that's a total right. of six, bringing me down to nine. Good, because I only have nine. Three sets of coins, so I'm going to get three. Uh, let's say one bandage. We'll say, and that'll be for the ears. Okay, perfect. Or better yet, maybe I should get the holy water since you got the bandage, Harlan. I got, just no, I got the coin. shovel. Okay. So I'll spend my three coins to get enough protection for three years. Three sets of years, I hope. Okay. Uh, so then uh, uh, everybody else, everybody should be down, because you spent 10 at the guild. And then everybody would be down lower. So, yeah, I didn't spend so 10. I, I, used the, uh, I used my... You used your skill, right? Skill. Yeah. Right. So you're at 10 now, right? I am at nine now because I spent five on the shovel and one on my own ears. Perfect. You have increased your hit points, Harlem. I did not. Mm. I instead selfishly increase your sanity. Selflessly. Stress. Sorry, stress. Selflessly. No, no I, I forgot. Selfishly. I, I did it I so that you guys would better yourselves. I did forget to mention that you guys do actually have coinage for the expedition itself that is requisitioned from the master. Uh, which is 14 gold, so you might not have to actually spend anything. Okay. Let's do that. <laughs> that sounds way better. Yeah, it does sound less better. <laughs> All right, I'll get, I'll get a thing of holy water and some bandages. So we spent 14 in t as a group, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, spent okay. 14 as a group. So that means five is off, that's nine. Three, uh, sorry, four, I guess, totally, that's ten. So, okay. And you said so bandages, that's three. So we have two do two dollars left then? Is that right, man? We have 14, uh, 14, you said, right? 14, yeah. So four for the ears, uh, the earplugs. Five for the shovel brings us down to five. Three for the yep. bandages brings us down to two. That's two coins yep. left. Two coins left. And nothing can be bought for two coins. But I will put another coin in and I will get holy water. Ah, uh, there, uh, there you go. go. And we have a skeleton. So we have, basically we have everything but anti-venom. Better than uncle venom. <laughs> yes, 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 right. yes, 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 Is that it for the provisions uh, section of this game? Yes. Is the whorehouse not open yet? Not yet. Then Still I have to be cleared. Then I will put my dick in a tree for the night. Okay. Just, as the leopard does too, but he doesn't need to be near it. Okay. Yeah. So that, <laughs> that's how. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Put this in there too. Will you? <laughs> I just throw it wherever I need it. <laughs> <laughs> <Brilliant>. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right so 
After purchasing all the provisions you believe will be needed for tomorrow's expeditions, you each settle in for the night. And the sounds of crows wake you in the morning, and you awake to see a dense fog has settled in over the hamlet. And it doesn't really feel like daytime, for the clouds are thick. And you gather together, groggy or not, and you begin making your way towards the blacksmiths. I think you walk. I, I, sorry, I turn to the others as we arrive together. I think this is something that um, may require the abomination's skills again. If he does come in me, <laughs> out of me, if he does come <laughs> out of me, I, I urge you each to look away. And I kind of hang back as the three continue forward. And the three of you, all the four of you, make your way down the decrepit cobblestone streets of the hamlet until you round a bend and there before you is the what once was probably quite the uh, stature of a building the blacksmiths is before you and the front door hangs off um uh, sorry the one Yes, it hangs off the hinges. I am finding it. Yes, the front door hangs off its hinges, and any glass that once made up the front window is long gone. Did the boy not Nailed... say there was no entrance? Did he not say it was boarded up? Nailed boards block both entries from the inside. <laughs> no, no, no. Let me interrupt with my question. It's going to be answered momentarily. <laughs> and the Vestal. Vestal, you sense something. There's a mingling. The air is laced with unholy energies with each step, growing stronger with each step you have towards the building. There's a darkness that hangs here. I'm not sure that we... Uh... What, what, what lies beyond here is, is something that I've never felt before. Something I can't describe. Now, the surroundings of the buildings, uh, it's mostly um, roads. You can see the abbey is not too far away, sitting on a hill. Um, and it also looks pretty worn down. Uh, and there is a small graveyard to the abbey right next to it. Um, but you can just barely make out some of the tombstones amidst the fog. The um, uh, graveyard catches my attention. And it's nighttime, correct? Uh, well, it feels like nighttime. It should be mornings by all accounts, but okay. this area always seems darker to you, even so, in the daytime. Wait till we get into so, the dungeon. It's even darkest. It's the darkest. <laughs> so as I stand in the rear, near the rear of the party, um, and the sun barely peeking through the dark clouds. Um, I look out into the graveyard and decide that I'd like to take a stroll in the graveyard. And so I do. In doing so though, however, do I see any catacombs, entrances? <laughs> that's a good question. I want you to go ahead and do a um, perception roll. Oh, so that's going to be cunning. Brilliant. Six to four, which is 12. And okay. Five. And you my have cunning is two. What does that mean? Okay, so you rolled you rolled four d six instead of three d six. You well the. Uh, am I not supposed to roll three d six and then the dragon die? No, the dragon die is part of the three d six. Oh, so. I'm sorry. Just take off the five. So say six two and then a four. All right, and we'll say the two is the dragon die. Not that it matters okay. right now. So 12, and then add your cunning. 12, so 13, 14. 14. So uh, the leper wanders off into the shroud of fog. And as you look between the gravestones that are slanted and angled, barely sticking out of the dirt, some of them, you come across one that strikes you as odd. The 
it looks as if it's been dug up and refilled. Hmm. No, I... None of us obviously see this, right? This is all. Here. Well, you see the leper wander off alone into the fog. And this is like a grave that looks like it's been a grave that's been dug sorry. up. Sorry, sorry, Chris. Go ahead. That's okay. Can I do a, a magic check, like some sort of uh, occult knowledge or anything like that, on the door before? I, I felt this presence here, mm -hmm. so I want to know if I get any information beyond just this sense. Okay, go ahead and do a magic check on the front door. The Vestal approaches the front door, <laughs> eyeing it warily. Okay, let me reset that because I didn't screw that one up. Okay. Okay, that's better. 12 plus my magic, which is 4, so 16. And if there's any blood magic involved, I have 18. Excellent. So, you feel a tingling in your head as you look and you're not really looking with your eyes it's hard to describe what exactly you're doing almost reaching out spiritually feel around the door with your mind when something when you touch something you feel it the tingling begins to grow and then all of a sudden you have a sharp pain in your head and you reel back as something is is, it almost sounds like very fast whispering, but the whispering is so loud, it hurts your brain. The Arbalist and I see this, obviously. Yes, you do. You see the Vestal go down to his knees. So I run over to him and I say, What's your name? <laughs> Wolfgang. Wolfgang. I say, Wolf Wolfgang! And I begin shaking you. And I begin kind of talking madly at you. <laughs> And I, I say, the voices that are that are in there. Listen to me. Listen to my voice. Listen. Listen, the Arbalist and I are here. Come. And I wave you over, you crazy Arbalist. <laughs> I, I walk slowly over. Of course you do. And I'm like shaking you, being like, listen. Listen to my voice. Listen. The voice said that there was... And I kind of drag you away a bit. Help. We, we cannot honest. enter there. I say. I say, no, no, listen. And I put the earplugs in myself, and I, and I reach into your pocket or whatever. And I say, put these in. It's the voices there. They're louder than, than anything. No, I don't know if you hear them. Do you hear the voices? No, they, they don't hear the voices. They no, just but I assume it. you're like this, right? And the yeah, kid yeah, is yeah. like, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm the pulling two to two get What? Yeah. Justin, did the earplugs help? Not with that. It seemed like the, the sound was coming from within you. Like internal, oh, I yeah. see. Okay, yeah. okay. Fair enough. Then I take him out and say, fuck this. Waste of a coin. <laughs> Waste of a bloody <laughs> coin. <laughs> <laughs> but still, as close as you guys are to the house, you don't hear the muttering that the Vestal heard. And Wolfgang, the voices are subsiding. You feel as if, and you, you can sense this, that by reaching out magically, you touched upon something. The door has been cursed. But by seeking out magically you did manage to drop the curse at the same time you feel you don't sense that same uh, energy coming from it but you do take three points of sanity i have i have absorbed the darkness myself it is it is now within me it's safe to proceed through that way are you are you sure are you confident that <laughs> I, I, I think we should take time. I, I don't think we should brashly enter the front hallway. I think we should wait and assess and the brashness. Leper. And I sort of look over my shoulder at the arbalist. <laughs> it would be Honestly. totally against my, my personal feelings to go in there willy-nilly. But before <laughs> the arbalist can react, the leper is now kneeling at the freshly covered grave mm. I put my hand upon the fresh soil mm. and some of the soil shifts beneath your hand if you had a shovel you might be able to do something about this and mm. find out what exactly lies underneath I look up at the gentlemen that are standing at the front of the the blacksmith gentlemen Gentlemen, can they hear me? Yeah, well, yes. Yeah. my voice <laughs> too <laughs> raspy and low? Where are the other drugs heading? And we look up, and I look up. Bring me a shovel. 
<laughs> bring it to me. And I do have a shovel. So I, yeah, bring me a shovel, I say. Come. I see. There's something here. The soil's been disturbed. Perhaps there is a secret way in and that uh, the scout missed. And I head over with my shovel. Mm-hmm. And we only have the one shovel, though, right? Yep, just the one. Does it destroy it, though, by using it? It does. Yeah. Funnily enough, these shovels were very poorly made. If you had a, a blacksmith, shovel. disposable shovels. Hey, if we had a blacksmith. That's what it's we're the doing. 1800s. <laughs> Is it? Um, uh, from now, we might find some shovels. Yeah. All right. I, I stick the uh, shovel tip. I just stick the tip in, and uh, <laughs> and I make my way with the grave. How do we do it? What are you doing? We can't disturb these resting places. No, I think I think he's right. I think it's it's too obvious. Look, if something was at the front door, as a protection of sorts, it was stopping us from entering. I think perhaps at the very least there's something buried here, recently disturbed Be earth. Be careful, for beneath the soil something something stirs. It might be alive. It might be nothing. Of course, and I. And this whole... Sorry. In other words, don't jam the shovel in too deep because then I. I don't go too <laughs> deep. I just put the tip in. Eh? Just the tip. Either. But just listen, the... I you, I uncover it as the arbalist. What you walk in the front door? No, 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 no. I I I'm overcome with the idea that I might be able to <laughs> kill something inside the house. So I gravitated towards the door, trying to look through the cracks, ready. My my crossbow, I guess. That's what I use. So it's you're. Nervous. Yeah, yeah, you use a crossbow. So looking in through the cracks of the door as the others leave you, you feel this odd sense that you are being watched. And you turn around and you realize that everyone's gone. You're completely alone, standing in the fog. We didn't tell them. Before this door. <laughs> so what happens when he digs up the grave? So as you dig, Kessler, you notice that it's really not that hard. It only takes you about 20 minutes. Oh, and the shovel uh, doesn't break because it's not very thick soil, right? Clear the grave. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, it's the funny thing. The actual game itself, like, you use a shovel, but I guess you're clearing, like... It would never be in... Put it this way. The shovel is to prevent... Well, you know. You played the game. It's to prevent, yeah. like, areas to be accessed and things like that. I'm just kidding. But if this yeah. is if this is a dead end... Not that I no. have a problem with it. I I would suggest that we don't lose. So. <laughs> this dirt yeah, just yeah, yeah. Oh, that's not yeah. that's not really up to us though. You can I feel wasn't... the end of the shovel already wobbling. This is a crappy shovel. All the shovels <laughs> at the provisioner are really crappy for some reason. <laughs> it's it's like, like they were made <laughs> in a carriage. So uh, as you're digging, you do manage to clear it up enough um, that you can actually see. Uh, it looks like the bottom of a a um uh, what are they called a casket has been broken open and there is a hole underneath that looks to lead into a larger area beneath the cave and with the last thrust of the shovel you feel the end break off and uh and it, and it, it no scatters in dust it just becomes dust yeah yeah just <laughs> And I, what turn, the fuck? and I turn to the others, obviously digging, probably being the first to see it. I turn back and I say, there's an entrance here. Look. Check to see if there's been uh, marks, like like whatever was in the grave uh, entered. Like uh, I'll do a perception. Okay. Um, my perception is not great, but I have smell. Smell right. vision. Smell a vision. So I have plus two. So seven, eight, nine, ten to smell. All right. Or to ten to smell. Okay. Well, I, I'm sure it's. I actually no. I you know I don't want to smell. I want to smell the hole. I want to smell the I hole. I go down and put my nose right up in the in the hole. All right. And so you rolled a ten. You said. Uh, yeah. All right. So sticking your head into the dark hole of the depths, you smell. The scent of earth, rotten corpses, decayed bones. But that is all. 
I think this leads to a larger undercroft. I smell decayed bones, plural. More than 300 and how many bodies... If I knew how many bones there were, I'd be very smart, but I don't. So, more than at least a few corpses worth. I think this might be an entrance. Does it look like there might be, like, a ladder down or something? Nope, no ladder. Then I Seeing... Seeing as how I'm... Go ahead, sorry. No, no, I'd rather you take it. As I say, seeing as how I'm probably closest to the grave already, I volunteer to enter first. All right. The leper has volunteered. I crawl down on my stomach and and very dirtily. Is that a word, dirtily? It It is is now. now. Very dirtily, Ah. I slide down the edge of the grave into the hole. All Arms right. First. The leper disappears into the hole before you. And leper, what you see is complete darkness. But you continue moving, scrambling your way forward until the dirt and rocks give way to stone. Stone pieced together eons ago. And the tunnel that was making you claustrophobic now opens up into a hallway. Uh, Hello. I yell out. And the echo, or is it just... Yes. Oh, yes. Your voice echoes in the halls. And you actually hear just a faintly, like a ding, 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 ding. Hello. Somewhere in the darkness. Um, but except him, for your echo, you're completely alone. Hearing him cry out a few times, I turn to the other person in my group. Wolfgang, thank you. Uh, nobody. And uh, I nod and I say, tell the Alice that I'll he'll be heading down here. And I jump down after him. All right. And I'll Vestal. Make way, uh, I make my way to the, uh, the front of the blacksmith to find the other party member that I can't, can't pronounce. Mm-hmm. The Arbalest is standing in front of the door, almost transfixed. Arbalest, we're not going in there. What are you doing? And I walk up to him to, to see. Arbalest, and I, I shake him by the shoulders and say, as I can see, he's too transfixed to even speak. Mm-hmm. Yes, his voice is lost. And actually, <laughs> Arbalest, you very faintly hear the Vestal, someone speaking, but you are completely transfixed in a thought. What is this thought that is keeping you from the reality of where you are? I'm standing in front of the door and I'm just thinking about killing anything and everything Mm. inside, behind behind the the wood panels or whatever Mm. it is. And all of this thought of thinking, when you sense someone standing beside you, what do you do? I turn and I and I I face the Vestal um, with my loaded, uh, uh, what's it called? Cross uh, crossbow. crossbow. Yeah, crossbow, loaded crossbow, and fire. But at the last minute, realize he's a member of my party and and yeah. just missing. Just missing. And, and, bolt, and my bolt, yeah. Yeah, the bolt whizzes by your ear, Wolfgang. As you can see, the shock and uh, almost anger, but a smile on the arbalist's face. I just, uh, for a moment, pause and I say, I don't even actually acknowledge what just happened. I say, we are not going in that way. <laughs> And I turn and I walk away. And I go towards the grave. Arbalest, do you follow? Uh, yes, I follow. Same Perfect. Before. So, the two of you make your way towards the grave, and in due time, you will enter it yourselves. But in the meantime, the abomination, Kessler, you pull yourself out from the dirt and find yourself pushing off off the ground right next to the leper. The smell of death and decay invades my senses, my nostrils flare, and I feel within me the fire be stoked 
the redness behind my eyes, the fire that, that dwells inside me, that yearns to come out once again, it, it, it's, it, it, it grows until I see the back of the leper's head and I, I stifle it quickly, I swallow hard and I take a step forward. Tagul, are you, can you see? And I pull out a torch. Mm. Uh, my eyes have even had a chance to adjust to the darkness, but no, I cannot see very far. And I can see with the beast mm. inside me, but um, again, I uh, light the torch. Out. Yeah, I light the torch for. Because I, I try to suppress that. I'm not I'm not too keen on the beast. And as you spend a moment lighting the torch, you hear the scrambling of of uh, bodies uh, coming through the hole once again. And the Vestal and Arbalest appear and stand up beside you. Greetings. Here they come. Yes. More birthing from the earth. Mm. <laughs> More what? Birthing from the earth hole above us. Birthing from the earth hole? <laughs> birthing. Yes, they're birthed. Listen here, from earth the hole. Earth. I, don't, I don't care for you very much. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm simply joking, Kessler. No, no, I understand. Have a laugh on me. <laughs> Jesus, Justin. fuck. That's quite, it's quite a cough there, friend. Oh, my goodness. There's your tongue falling there. And I, right. I, I bring the torch, which is just this, and I bring it closer to you. I say, Vestal and her Arbalist, I'm, I'm glad you uh, you joined us, Vestal. <laughs> Vestibule. 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 Because I did that, I prayed over the, the chalices um, back at the camping, when we were camping. Can yeah. I bless one of the campaign, companions? I'll say yes. So I would like uh, to, because uh, Harlan didn't drink from the chalice. I'd say it's only between the two of them. So I'm going to actually bless the leper this time. Okay. So he gets a plus two attack and plus two defense until we camp again. Perfect. So your defense now, I think, what was your defense originally, Alex? Uh, my defense was 11. All right, so now it is 13, so remember that um, until your next camping, which won't and, be until uh, the end of the game. Yeah, and all your attacks are plus two as well. Come, I think the leper might have found something deeper. Leper, what do you yeah. see? So down the hall, leper, you, you, you see that you are in, just as you predicted, a catacombs, and... Uh, alcoves line the walls with skeletons lying inside long dead and down the hall you can just <clears throat> barely make out in the torchlight a fork you can go left or you can go right <laughs> and based on where you entered the uh, the coffin you could go left towards the abbey or you could go right towards the blacksmith's Gentlemen, and I explain this. There seems to be a fork ahead. Behind us, I don't see much. I assume there's just more graveyard. But if we go right in the fork ahead, we will hit the blacksmiths. If we go left, I believe it may be the abbey. I can't say. Then I suppose we should continue towards the blacksmith, no? Yes. I am in agreeance. I am in agreeance with you. Perhaps it'd be good to have a, an area to fall back with. If we use these catacombs again, we might be able to access the abbey. I'm going to make a mark on the floor. Uh, I'm going to grab a stone and just etch in uh, an arrow, kind of showing the direction we came from. Perfect. All right. And the so... artist fucking changes it when you walk away. <laughs> no, I, know. I can just I see have, him do something. Like that. I have, I have, res I have a little bit of respect for the vestibule. Jesus! You after you just tried to shoot me? No, no, because because you didn't acknowledge it. Because you didn't acknowledge it, I feel this. So kind of... be a dick, don't acknowledge it. That's how you get friends. Got it. <laughs> with, with the arb, with the arbalist, with his insanity. He's an enabler. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so... But the shit that he's going through right now... Yeah. The four of you make your way down the dark hallways of the catacombs and turn right, veering towards the blacksmiths. But something surprises you as, the, as you round the bend, as just down the hall, maybe 30 feet away, you can see a door, and it, underneath 
light flickers. Should I, should I stifle the torch for now? And I stifle it. Shh. And I, and I listen to the door to see if we can hear anything. And you step up to the door, and I need you to do a willpower check. For as you stand next to the door, you can hear it quite plainly, the sound of people chanting. You do not under understand the words, but somehow they begin to impact you. The, the words seem to writhe within you somehow. To each of us? Uh, no, the Vestal just, who's listening. Just check. I rolled a 16. Okay. So you manage to somehow suppress the uh, desire to panic at these words that are somehow creating that impression within you. And you still have your wits about you. And I quickly say, uh, we need to protect ourselves. And I reach for the uh, the gauze and, and the wax, and I, and I roll <laughs> it into a little balls, and I hand it to each of them. I say, put these in your ears. I, I hear there's a dark chanting beyond this door. Very well. You haven't got any ears. <laughs> what? You have a problem. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just holes in the side of my head. Well, still shove something in them. It's, it's... <laughs> it will barely stay in there. It's all right. It sometimes it off. Make, it, make it bigger. It doesn't have to be how it's stuck in. It's just sometimes you just work it a bit. I take the, the long great sword out of my sheath in the back and hold it down by my side in a very nonchalant manner. Yes, I, I believe that's a good idea. And I reveal that I brought a short sword with me for the first time after the last battle. Perhaps we can do this in a way that that is doesn't need to be so violent. If if I enter there I can I can I can blind them with with a great light and perhaps that will give us a chance to have the upper hand and we can uh, kill defeat them, them without killing them. Do, and how is that less violent? Wolfgang. Well, well, well how do we know they're just not misguided? I think, I think as much as your intentions are pure, I think they're a bit naive. I think based on what we've battled with last time, the, the large man who, who whipped that scout near to death, the creatures that came from the shadows to fight us, I, I, I don't believe the people who have taken up these ruins are purely here for well, innocent devices. I believe them to be evil and plagues on this earth. And I feel like it is our duty, our obligation to, to rid the earth of them. And together, and I hear the words, the chanting, and I, I think, oh, it's so, it's so evil that, uh, then, it, then I, I agree with Kessler that we need to uh, get in there and take these people out. So I pull out my morning star and I say, okay, on my mark. Yes, me. And I kick the door open to run in. Boom. And the door smashes open, brittle boards, decades old, and you rush into the room, lit by candles, and what you see completely horrifies you. And we're going to stop there for the mid-game poll. <laughs> what? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the mid-game post. That's the time of the show where we stop the action, and we jump over to the Facebook group where we asked you guys a question. Uh, if you answer the question correctly, you're entered into a die pool, and if we roll your number, you win XP that you can spend in-game, or you can spend it to buy me good things, like real makeup, because this is just a permanent marker, and it, and it smells weird, and it burns my skin. I could use real makeup. Send me real yeah, makeup. You have it on your own. I have makeup. Too. Yeah, I'm a full, I'm a completionist. His nails are dark for some reason. Alan had a whole other campaign <laughs> for because of the the blackness. I did remember. what for blackness? Well, be... <laughs> no, I didn't what? say that. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I didn't mean that. So it sounded like, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for hanging out with us. This is dark darkest dungeon return. <laughs> Please, if you have not yet, like the video. It is so important that you do that because it means that David gets to be fed tonight. Isn't that right, David? Yes, definitely. Otherwise, he all doesn't I, get his charcuterie. All, all I get is 
Jeez. Violin music and violin yeah. music. His <laughs> wife is a is a quite quite a good player. Um, anyway, so yes, please like the video. If this is the first time you've ever watched us, welcome. Please join the Facebook group. The link is in the description. It is where all the cool people hang out. Everyone I love is there, including. Oh no, you're not part of it, David. No, that's right then. Everyone I love is there. I'm joking. Join the Facebook group. It is so cool. Also like I'm, the Facebook I'm page. Part of it. I know. I'm just joking. Like the uh, like the video and subscribe and all that kind of fantastic stuff. Um, let's ask the question, and that way I can do all this while we're doing it. Justin, what is the question of the day? All right. So the question of the day is going to be an easy one. Uh, I want you to write out in your own words what is the job description of an arborist. Tell us what the job description <laughs> of an arborist is. That's the mid-game post? <laughs> That's the mid-game post. Let's... Uh... 1d20 then, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Not a Google answer. Your own words. Your own words. No what plagiarizing here. An... What is their word limit? They have to have a word limit. Urban Dictionary. Uh, in, in five words. Yeah, yeah, five, five words. words. Why does it say arborist? Is I cut trees often. Yeah. That's budget, right? <laughs> In five words, in five yeah. words, define what is a what is an arborist. It what has to be it has to be legit because I don't exactly know what an arborist is. So you need to be concise. Possible to do in five me. words. A person who heals trees. Just <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. It's good. It's good. It's good. All right. So that is uh, that. But yes, please, if you're watching this, please, like I said, like the video, join the Facebook group. On the Facebook group, that's where we get together and we talk and we chat and we hang out, and that's where you can win uh, or rather enter the running to possibly win the most valuable post. The most valuable post is the post of the week that we select out of the others uh, that either was the most fun or the most entertaining or perhaps promoted the most sense of community. This week, I'm happy to announce that it was Brianna who won. Yay! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I like how you did that. What? <clears throat> With the MB MVP in the, uh, in the opening yeah, yeah, credits. Yeah. Um, that was cool. Uh, how did you watch them? Never mind. What do you mean? Brianna's I'm post was... Um, it was a funny one. It was just sort of had a, had conversations, but it more got my uh, thoughts rolling. And I think it was who wants to see them doing uh, a, a, a comfortable mystery with turtlenecks and hot cocoa and ambient thunderstorms and the cottage who done it. And it got my juices flowing. And I think I'm going to write one. I think we're all going to do it. Like, hi, <laughs> welcome back to the comfortable. Yeah, mystery. we all can see there. Pull up a chair. Hi, pull up a chair. <laughs> welcome. Um, so well done, Brianna. Oh, you pipe. won. And what? You have a pipe. <laughs> I have a pipe. I can just sit there with a the pipe. David, before. get a crack out. pipe. You crack. Oh, <laughs> no, like a nice one from yeah. a pipe like maker a nice in Toronto. Oh, like a corn. Oh, that's right. Pipe. I remember you. Can you show up? Get it. I want to see it. Your pee. Yeah. Do you, you want me to get it right now? No, don't get yes, it. Right get now. it. No, no, that's all right. Go get it. Fine, go get it right now. Jesus. Fine. Okay. All right. Anyway, um, so yeah, please do all that cool stuff. Like, share, comment. Thank you to everybody chatting along the Discord. Um, yeah. Discord is where we put all of our chatting, so make sure you hang out there. That's where all the cool people. Oh, and next week we are back to Feng Shui. <laughs> That's right. Uh, which is the action RPG that we are running, and it is a blast. Okay, let's see fucking David's pipe. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, very nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. In there. Yeah, that is nice. and this is this little bag. And <laughs> wow. Huh? Yeah, it's from the, from one of the only pipe makers left in Toronto. David Somebody's... is a bit of a what's the word? Pretend no, what's the real word? It's your your you like art <laughs> you like artisan stuff. You're yeah, you're, certain things. Yeah, you appreciate that. And uh there's hey, I totally agree. I'm very much the same as you can tell. I could spawn oh, yeah. for eyeshadow. Um, <laughs> I know, anyway. I know a really great guy. Just in general, is it me? <laughs> no, no, no. I oh, you mean a pipe guy. guy? Okay. No, an eyeshadow guy. Oh, He's, can you get me? Needs... Can you hook me up? Yeah, I'll get you a uh, <sighs> a, 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 two, a, a big two. He calls it a thing. Yeah. Who doesn't? <laughs> All right, let's do this. Uh, five words. Let's. Do five Kellen, words I'm sorry. I'm sorry got, to say that Kellen's wrong. A person okay. who arbors all wrists. We got. Is wrong. We got plant, <laughs> plant and care for trees. That's that's accepting. Man, yeah. woman that eats trees. That's not right. Eats? No, no. no. <laughs> Guy who works on trees. I think that's fair. Yeah, we'll get Person that. who arbors all wrists. That's not true. A tree plastics. That's only four words, David. A tree plastic <laughs> surgeon is four. And Surgery. that's not really right. But, well, it's kind of right. But no, because yeah. plastic surgeons add. Arbors don't really add. Well, they fixed. Yeah, but plastic surgeons, it's more cosmetic. I say we give it to him. Okay. I, so that's not true. But it's only four words. No, disqualified. Uh, okay. Is it a plant person? That's not an answer. A gardener, fancy word. 
a gardener it, fancy word for it. Yeah, okay. A gardener uh, fancy, fancy word, word for it. Yeah, that's... that's I refuse but it's to trees answer only. this one seriously, hee <laughs> hee. <laughs> <laughs> Studies fauna of various types. I like that one a lot, but it's... Um, fauna, though? It's flora. No, it's flora. Flora. What's fauna? Fauna's flora. Animals. Flora. Yeah. Flora. Okay. Tree keeper. <laughs> Specialist in trimming tree pubes. Specialist in trimming tree pubes. I think that's my favorite. That's accurate. That is accurate. Does weird tree BDSM porn. <laughs> Hug and love <laughs> the trees. Uh, I don't know, Justin. How okay, do you we have to pick... judge this shit? <laughs> okay, it's... I'm just I'm gonna roll a one D six and, and I get the count number. Number. So we have to choose choose out. the first six that are qualified. Okay, qualify. so that's yeah. uh, one so there's always two, a speed element. Three, no. Three is the number. Three. Okay, so it's it's, fuck. It's it's it's. One. Is it is two. it a plant person or a gardener? Fancy word for it. a gardener? Fancy word gardener for gardener? Fancy a, word for Venus. Venus. Yeah. You win. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, well done, Venus. You you answered what an arborist is in five words. There you go. <laughs> not many people can do that. So and not many people can do that apparently. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's that's the thing. So uh, please, like I said, like the video if you're watching it. We're back next week with Feng Shui, um, which is an awesome system. <laughs> and uh, so make sure to hang out with, with us next week as well. But don't leave now because you, you got lots more show to go. And uh, that's it. Without further ado, let's throw it back to the main man, Mr. J.J. James. Take it away. Four long shadows are cast across the floor of the room that's before you. But the first thing you notice, even before the long shadows, is the blood that is splattered across the entire building. Everywhere. The four shadows belong to four figures, all standing opposite each other in a square. But in the center of the square, a man kneels. His head and arms are cast backwards and his rib cage is opened. Jesus Christ. And the four men chant around it, getting louder and louder, just muffled sounds with your gauze and it's getting louder and louder they're reaching the peak of whatever they're trying to cast jesus christ who i mean sorry. <laughs> oh that jesus so I, fellow yes 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 um, we, we run in with the intention to have like uh kind of like a surprise so being surprised it, it slowed us down a bit but uh, does it look like the man with his chest open? Is he alive still? Is he? Uh, his eyes, his eyes are wide open, and it looks to be the face of a man who is dead. But and yet his body convulses in an unnatural rhythm. Jesus Christ! Then I, as soon as I get in, I want to try to blind uh, the nearest cultist. And I'm gonna run to the nearest. I'm gonna run to the guy closest to me. I'm assuming. So the same one. So as I see, yeah, as I see, um, I'm going to actually move out of the way, come, burst through the door, and I'm going to blind the nearest one. Is that perception like initiative? We're doing initiative, I'm assuming, right? We are going to do, well, I'm going to let Chris do one surprise attack, the Vestal. Okay. And we will do initiative as well, and then... Okay, so my, my surprise attack would be that uh, cast of of uh, Dazzin Light. Blind an opponent instantly, stunned for one round. Perfect. You said it works instantly? Yeah. All right. Uh, so flashing light erupts all around you, and some of you can barely see. You, you close your eyes, and when you open them, everything still looks the same. The one of the cultists has staggered, and their chant has stopped somewhat. All right, so let's all roll initiative. 3d6, everybody, and then you're going to be adding your uh, dexterity or your initiative bonus, well, as well as your initiative bonus, if you have initiative as a skill. I'm going to do dexterity, but I don't have initiative as a skill. Um, but I can still add it, right? Yes, yes. If you have initiative as a skill, you add two to whatever you roll on top of your dexterity. I got a total of nine. I have 12. 19. 19? Jesus. Wow, that's a good roll. Yeah. I got a... Wait, I don't even know what my dexterity is. I rolled an 18. 
Roll three dice, David, and add dexterity, which is on your Your sheet. dexterity is no, no. is four. Four? Yeah. Okay, so I got a nine. All right. And uh, you said you got 12 there, Harlan? I did. And Targul, what about you? I got an 18. 18, okay. Let me just mark this down. Do, 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 do. Okay. So, uh, Vestal, you've done your flash and you are so prepared going into this room, you are ready to do another attack as well. Um, okay, so I walk in and I, I de- make it so that one person is blinded and I see that a Kessler is running in that same direction. So I peel off to the other one and I pull my mace out and I try to uh, cleave him in the head. Excellent. Go ahead and roll your strength. You run towards the cult. (laughs) (laughs) Brandishing your mace, ready to swing to crack his skull, he continues to chant despite knowing that you are there. Okay, and uh, I rolled a 19. You rolled a 19. Your mace connects with a crack. And to, um, roll your damage for that. Okay. Uh, I will do that in the meantime as you move on to someone else. All right. Next, we have Targul. What do you do when you enter the room? So, immediately I take notice how the cultists are chanting and extremely distracted. And they see the person with the open rib cage in the middle. And stepping out of character, is that person dead? Or is it, like, some fucked up person, or what? That's a good question. It's hard to tell from here. In the candlelight, it's hard to really see its features, but it looks, his face doesn't look like there's a lot of awareness behind it, and yet his body continues to convulse, its chest cavity opened. Not knowing exactly what is in the middle, whether it be a man, a beast, or the undead, I immediately lunge towards the beast in the center of the cultists and use my sword to strike. You swing your sword in a large arc towards the man in the center of the room. And as you're doing that, the Vestal's mace connects with the head of the first cultist. How much damage do you do, Vestal? Uh, 10 points of damage. So I imagine it's fairly substantial. Ten points of damage. Uh, I, indeed, it is. Uh, let me double check. The mace connects, and you can feel it going deep into the man's skull as I pull up his stats. And he's knocked sideways, and he staggers, stopping his chant momentarily. He turns towards you. This man is hulking, larger than you thought when you first enter the room. His chest is bare but his muscles are ripple, and he has a strange mask, almost like the lepers, as he turns towards you, brandishing big cat-like blades on his hands, almost like Wolverine. <laughs> Who? Uh, Wolverine. Some character is I'm just so, making up so, right did now. You, did you? I did, I just made that, that up. That sounds, Very original. <laughs> and he goes to swipe at you, Vestal, continuing to mutter, the chant. Just as Targul swings his sword, what did you roll there, Targul? A six. A six to attack. Yes. That's uh, the 3d6. Yes. All right. Two, three, and one. And add your strength. Yeah, add your strength. Oh, right. Uh, two, three, one, and four, so ten. And you have a bonus to your strength, is that correct? I missed that. Is it plus two? It is a plus two to attack. All right, so t- uh, 12. <laughs> <laughs> I, does, I just doubled it. <laughs> Forgot uh, about all those uh, addings. Nevertheless, your swing cuts through the air as this, and it connects with the man lying on the ground, convulsing, and roll for damage <laughs> just as the abomination jumps into action. So, abomination, abomination. I know. Kessler. 
I okay. know. Kessler, I was, it's you. <laughs> okay, say it again. It's Kessler Collins, by the way. So after the Vestial does his, and then you took the big guy on Targul, correct, in the middle? I'm going to continue on to the smaller guy that I was sort of tracking down. And I'm going to run up to him. Now, I don't have stats for my short stored, so I'm going to use my manacles. Um, and sort right. of use the same stats for ease. That's fine. Okay. Um, how does he look when I run up to him? And I'm sort of a bit tentative too, because as a human, I'm not typically used to fighting. You run towards the figure, and as you get closer, ready to swing your short sword, you realize that this person who you thought was a man is actually a woman. Oh, she fuck. stands with uh, a very revealing dress <laughs> and another mask on her face and a scepter Boobs. in her hand. And she has boobs, yes. And Joke's on you, well. Kessler's gay. He strikes her down. <laughs> uh, She's floating slightly off the ground. Is she? I'm still going to attack yeah. her. So I'm going to be, ooh, 11, 12, uh, 12 plus 4 brings me 16 to hit. All right. Your blade connects with her pale skin. Perfect. Uh, Go ahead and roll for damage so as the obelisk loads a 12, bolt. 12 damage. 12 damage, yep. all right. Uh, so before the Arbalest manages to land a bolt into his crossbow, the short sword of the Abomination connects <sighs> and gashes a long gash across this lady's chest and she recoils back screaming and she distances, she tries to distance herself but and place another of the stronger cultists between you, but she continues her chant as well as blood oozes down the front of her. Mm. We need to stop them uh, from chanting. Arbalest, it's you. What do you do? Do you so, want to know what I my just, damage was to that? I do want to know what your damage was, Targul. Uh, now? Now. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it was eight. <laughs> eight damage. To the beast whatever in the center. Perfect. So your sword connects, and the beast doesn't shout out or cry out in any way. It just continues to convulse as you pull your bloody blade out from him. Doesn't react in the slightest. Good. I'll just hack away at it. Arbor, Arbalest. I'm doing it now, too. <laughs> Arbalest, it's you now. Uh, okay, so right now there's two that have been hit. Is that correct? Uh, three that have been hit. The man in the center, the yeah. uh, man cultist that the Vestal has attacked, the female cultist that uh, the Ab Abomination has attacked, and then there are two other cultists remaining. Okay. Are any of them kind of in line with each other? Like, could I try and hit two? Between loading a bolt and moving into position, you would not be able to do that. Okay, all right. Okay, so I'm standing there with a week's worth of thoughts all rushing through my whole body, things that I've been trying to avoid, things that I've been trying to, to keep at bay, and I finally see targets worthy of my my obsession. Mm. And I, I aim at the furthest um, using Sniper's mark. Perfect. Uh, um, and I fire my first bolt. Like it's okay. an extension of my body. <laughs> now, Sniper's mark, I'm treating it as a minor action. Uh, so to load your crossbow, I'll say that you loaded your crossbow before entering the room because that would make sense. Yeah. Um, a sniper's mark is like marking your target. You say, that's my guy. I'm going to shoot at him next. So that's when you're going to get your bonus to the attack. Okay. All right. Okay. And now that he's marked, now you can do your attack. Okay, I, I fire. Excellent. So you get a plus two, two attacks versus him. Okay. Uh, so 3d6. 3d6. Yes, roll to attack with 3d6. Oh, right, so... but he didn't discolor or die. We don't know which one's the specialty. We'll just do which whoever's in the middle. It doesn't matter. There's no doubles. <laughs> uh, so I got a 12 from my die. A 12 from the die, okay. Yeah. And, uh, then, and you get a plus to your, plus your dexterity, which is four. Plus four, okay, 16. Yeah, and then plus two from your mark. 
Okay, an 18. Then. Right. Excellent. Uh, so your bolt does connect. And go ahead and roll for damage. You're going to be rolling 1d6 plus your, st- your uh, dexterity. Okay, 10. Ooh. Mm, very nice. And which one were you going for again? I was going for the one right behind. So was the the male on the left and the female on the right? And then there's two behind? Yes. I was going for the one right behind the female. Excellent. Okay, so it is another male cultist. And he takes 10 points of damage. Just a quick review. The first one that the Vestal attacked, how much damage did he take, Chris? Chris, 10 points. 10 10 points. And Harlan, you did... I think I did... 12 or something. 12. Did you lot. did 12. Yeah. Yes, you did. Excellent. So, the bolt connects. Describe it, David, in an epic fashion with your microphone <laughs> on. Um, a week of pent up energy loaded into this bolt flies mm. out towards this faceless cultist that I can sink all of that passion into and it connects right mm. to his I guess wait it, it's not gonna die right it is a guy yes no he's not gonna die though he's right? not gonna die no he's not gonna die no, no one's gonna and die I see dude. It, no <laughs> um and I see it sink into his shoulder close yes. to his heart and I feel a surge of mm. uh, how does it feel Tell uh me. both exhausting and satisfying Satisfying. But also scares me. It scares you as well, but also quite satisfying, yes. Yeah. Wonderful. (laughs) Thank you. All right. So the the cultists finally gather their footing, manage to get their footing. And each one of them, everyone, no matter how much they've been damaged, each one is continuing to chant. We need to stop these people from chanting. Now, the one standing before you, Vestal, uh, takes a swipe at you. Do, 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 and it does. Seven plus, 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 plus. A ten to defense. Do you hit? Does it hit? A total of ten? Yes. No. Uh, I see the blow coming and I sidestep. I say, you will atone for your sins. And as that is happening, another one, the female one standing in front of the abomination, jumps backwards, putting herself between, putting another cultist between herself and the abomination. And she begins to speak, but her words change. And she's focusing very intently on you, Kessler. As I keep my fingers in my ears with wax. So you're going to get a plus three on your willpower roll for the uh, the wax in your ears. <laughs> Six, seven, uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's twelve. The first time it's a positive thing. <laughs> I know. Six, four. All right. She rolled a thirteen. So fucking what? <laughs> well, uh, the uh, wax starts to slip. A waste of a dollar. <laughs> dissolve. And you can just barely make out what she's saying. And the words that she's saying stress you out a lot. Mm. And you are going to take three points of stress. Shit. I'm at eight. And she laughs as so she sees her words sinking into you. <laughs> Next, the cultist that was hit by the bolt rushes forward towards you, Arbalest, and he's going to swing his wolverine claws at you. And he's going to miss completely. Describe how you dodge that attack. With your, with your do it epically with voice. your microphone on. <laughs> I see I see a Wolverine-esque creature coming toward me and I 
sink back into some sort of what's it what's that called? Where uh, a crab walk. Uh crab walk as he swipes right over me and I come right back up. Excellent. And, uh look him right in the eyes. And his eyes look completely soulless, dead inside, and yet there is a hunger that you can't quite put your finger on. Actually, no, you can kind of relate to the hunger that you see. <laughs> <in his eyes. laughs> you, you know what he's going, you know what he's about. And I, 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 I look right in his eyes and then I wink at him. Ooh. Yeah. Something he, happened in here. He licks his lips. <laughs> All right, and <laughs> now the other cultist, the one that is between uh, you and the female, is actually another female, Jeez. and she is going to uh, continue chanting towards the man in the center of the room, and she's actually increasing her speech just a little bit, maybe to get the process done a little bit quicker. And that's them. We are on to round number two. To start off this round, we're going to go to, we're just going to go to Targul for a second, just to hear his thoughts. Targul, what are you thinking right now? Why is this beast in the middle not affected by the slash of my blade? What is going on? And then I lock eyes with the only cultist, the female, that has increased her chanting. I've set my eyes upon her. Actions next. Vestal, Wolfgang. Don't listen to her, Kessler. He's, he's, his, his spirit is waning. You can see he's struggling with the words that he's hearing. And I, I say, you are with friends now. It is not time. And I try to in, imbue him with some comfort as I, as I perform my newest ability, which is uh, Shepherd's um, mm -hmm. Blessing. Is that uh, Serenity. So I'm going to actually spend uh, six points of my magic points to heal him three points of, <laughs> of sanity. Comfort all over. Perfect. So his words reach you, Kessler. How do you feel? Mm. When her words spoke to me, I could feel the abomination pressing against my skin. I could feel him trying to work his way out, and within me the rage began to build, but it wasn't a controllable rage like, like before. It was, it was not as if the abomination would come out and I would be able to control him like I always have. It felt almost like he was being pulled out of me for a sinister purpose to perhaps do the will of this woman. And yet as his, his words sink through me, they, they enter my ears and... and, and and fall upon my, my soul and my heart, I can feel the abomination not only shrink back against the darkness in my mind once again, but also back into my control, into the locked cage I keep him in. And with tears in my eyes, I turn towards him and I nod a brief thanks before standing back up myself. And as you stand up, Targul jumps into action. Unless, uh, Wolfgang, you wanted to do anything else, I would like to uh, shift as best I can to a more um, advantageous position, more defensive, and try to go into full defense if I can. Uh, That's I a like... major action. Okay, then I would just like to shift, I guess. Okay, so you shift back so that the man has to move towards you to take another attack. Good. Now, Targul, as you see Wolfgang shift back behind you, your eyes locked on the cultist who's speeding up the ritual. It's your initiative. Uh, with my blade firmly planted in the, in the body that lies in the middle of the room, I step forward and think nothing else but to lift it from the gushing, lifeless body, swinging it at the unharmed cultist that stands there chanting her damn chant. And I swing at I her swing. throat. Yes. Six, ten. Doubles, too. Meaning if you hit, you can stunt to three points. Sixteen. Sixteen is a resounding hit, and you can... Stunt all over. Do a stunt. So your blade connects. Oh, right. And how it connects here, I'll send that to you. No, how it connects, hit. we will see in a moment. But first, we're going to go to 
the abomination while Targoyle figures out what's going on. As Wolfgang's words um, invigorate me, I step back up again, nodding to him. And I, and I see the man between me and the woman. Now, manacles are the chains that hang from my... But they, have, they must have a reach on them, correct? They do, yes. They How do. far away is she? Uh, she, yes. So the, the person that's in between you and the person that you attacked is actually another female. I want uh, that one. The one I already cut up. She seems... Yes. Does she look a bit more powerful than the others? Does she seem... I got the impression that she was maybe... Important. important. Yes, there is something about her. She's wearing a pendant yeah, that she, the others are not. Well, she's got to die. So I'm going to try to swing her. Can I, can I get around the woman in front of me? You definitely can, yes, with your manacles. <sighs> then while the beast is against the back wall of my mind, it still breathes fire, but now it's under my own volition. So, ooh, 8, 9, 10 plus the... Um, manacles, which is plus four, so that's 14 to hit. That is a resounding hit. And as you are uh, connecting with your manacles, we're going to jump back to Targul. Targul, what stunt did you do? I've decided to go with lightning strike. And therefore, sorry, lightning attack. Yes. And therefore, immediately make a strike against another player. Uh, so another <clears throat> monster. Yes. Cultist. Excellent. But in fact, maybe I'll do it against the same one. All right. It's better to take down one cultist and leave only three left. So go ahead and do two damage rolls. And you can see and hear right beside you, not too far away, the abomination is taking his manacles and is getting ready to whip them at the other cultist that's behind your target. So I'm rolling these twice? Yeah, so uh, whatever your damage is. On Ooh! Your... Sorry. So, oh, wow. so 12. Oh, 12 plus my strength, so 12. 16 mm. for the one. All right. 16 damage. Yeah. And then 15 damage. All right. 16 and 15. So she is eviscerated. Tell oh. us, how does that look? I, with very little uh, effort, slice her head clean off, but my aim is not very good, and instead of getting right the neck, I also take off the top of her shoulders. <laughs> and so it goes right through her chest, affecting the... her boobs, too. Okay. Boobs the really half... taking a hit on this. <laughs> The upper half slides off her body and she begins to fall to the ground just as manacles whip through the air to the cultists behind her. Kessler, what is your damage? So I decided to spend the two stun points on Mighty Blow, which inflicted an extra 1d6, and I rolled both sixes, which I'm very sexually frustrated about. It would bring me to a total of 19 damage. 19 Plus damage. Plus my 12 has to fuck this bitch up. She is also eviscerated, so punished is, with impunity. Is he? Oh yes, 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 yes. Is the light from my torch gives purchase to the room? No, I um. So again, re reiterating what had happened, she she cast her spell on me. The vestal vestal <laughs> turned to me and gave me the power to stand back up, wiping the tears from my eyes. The manacle in my hand, the abomination now back within my cage, within, with mighty force. It wasn't just the, 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 the weight of the manacle that did it, but the, the dexterity I used to go around the woman before me that is instantly killed moments later, to swipe across her eyes the thick metal iron crushing through the bridge of her nose with such force, almost like a bullwhip. It literally shattered deeper behind her eyes, causing bits of her brain and skull and pieces of sinew to splatter against the wall next to her as she floats for only a second and falls to the floor in a, in, a, in a pile. Well struck, abomination. And, she and falls as I do, the, the, a little bit of drool begins coming from the sort of my mouth as the abomination becomes hungry. And as her floor, as her body relaxes against the floor, the arbalest, it is your initiative. Um... <laughs> 
if I decide not to load, can I use one of my bows to strike? If you're can gonna I... do like a like a melee attack? Yeah, like using one of my my arrows right going for his throat. I love it. Let's do it. Okay, so I I after winking and licking my lips at the at the at the cultist, I take my next bolt and without even thinking about loading it in my bow, I go for his neck as he's in as, as he's in range. Go ahead and do a dexterity roll. I'll treat it like a dagger. Okay. <clears throat> so that'd be three d six. That's three d six to attack. So I got a six and two threes, twelve plus four, sixteen. It hits. Okay. And then one d six. What's oh. that clicking noise? It's his goddamn laptop. Click. Oh. <laughs> 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 what was your damage? Uh, a two plus uh, what? My, my dexterity plus, plus four, so six. Six. You connect with the bolt. It sinks into his neck, and you see the once hungry look in his eyes fade to one of panic, and then one of nothingness. He's dead. Describe <laughs> how he dies. <laughs> How do you finish uh, him off? Oh, uh, I just hold the bolt in his neck as he sinks down, feeling, kind of almost feeling, I just, the, his pulse slowing as it goes down through the bolt. And as the life slips from his body, what do you feel, Arbalest? Uh, satisfaction and scariness. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, very good. So, the last remaining cultist stands before the Vestal, and he's staggered in his speech slightly, he's, but he continues to try to finish the chant, and he begins speaking faster and faster. <clears throat> As he swipes again toward the Vestal. Somebody needs to fuck this Don't guy. let him finish! Oh, but he cannot. As he continues to try to speak faster, he actually is going to take one step back from the Vestal, who also took a step back from him. So now he is out of the fray for now. Hmm. Next, Vestal. Wolfgang, what do you do? I see that he needs to be in that position in particular to cast whatever he's doing, his cultist darkness. So I, I approach him and I look him in the eyes and I say, you have, you have strayed from the path. I say, were that my blood would control my fist, I would try to rip your arm from socket, but I'm a holy man. I will let the judgment be upon you from the spirits. And I look him in the eye and grab him. And I, and I use my ability of uh, uh, judgment. Okay. And it does an automatic 1d6 plus my magic damage and heals me three points. So, um, perfect. 1d6 plus five. Uh, so, I believe that's nine points of damage. Nine, nine points nine, of damage. Eight, eight points of damage. Eight points of damage. So your words sink in as his body begins to convulse and shake, and his words begin to completely make no sense whatsoever. They're not the same chanting as before. And you hear an audible pop as the nerves in the back of his neck snap, and he grows limp. In your hands. And as he falls to the ground, you can see that there is like uh, ashy soot that's now escaping from the sockets of his eyes. Yes. And as he falls to the ground, the last words leaving his lips as well. The body in the center of the room, the one that had been convulsing, the big man, collapses as well. And all is quiet. What, 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 was, what was this all about? And I point to the man with the open chest cavity in, in the center. What were they trying to do? And I slowly approach. 
Mm. And you can, you begin to approach, and after a couple steps as you're getting closer, you hear a <laughs> squishing sound. Still dark, though you can see that the open chest is moving slightly. Without hesitation, I reach in and grab it and begin eating it. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> what the fuck? Everybody else is going to take one point of stress. As as, But I want to describe it as the abomination begins coming out of me. Like, So basically, I, I, I tentatively walk towards if you're gonna allow this to happen i don't know sure yeah okay so i'm like what 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 was the cause of all this and then the the fire is constantly being beaten back and and beaten back within me and i see this this bloody pulp of a of a thing the the heart of this man sort of pulsating and the fire within me simultaneously thinks of how to extinguish this before whatever is in it escapes and and I sort of give way for the abomination, and the abomination reacts with with fiery eyes reaching out. By the time the hand touches on the heart, my claws have already begun to sprout, and it brings it towards its mouth, which draws out into a snout and begins biting as its jagged teeth leak blood all down its chin in front of the other two. And for everybody else who <laughs> sees this, um, uh, First off, how much damage did I take for seeing you transform into a uh, abomination? Oh yeah, I forgot. Um, <laughs> worth it, Harlan. Two <laughs> stress to all. Two stress to all. Come I'm on, gonna man. Tack on an extra one for what he's doing, and oh. the image that you guys have is is basically that. It's it's just one snapshot of this beast. It's snout slowly elongating in the profile, and you see it bite down on this this. Um, was it a heart? Almost, I guess. I thought it was a heart. Is it not? It's not a heart. Oh. It's it's some sort of organic sack of matter. And as he bites into it, you see the <laughs> blood and um, flecks of liquid splash out into the air, and a single tentacle, a single tentacle flips up into the air, and vanishes into his mouth. And as it, as it goes down my esophagus, alien, um, the 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 abomination begins sort of to recede within me. The pieces of skin still hanging from its red flesh, and I I kind of just turn away from them. <sighs> it's too late to shelter yourself. It's you 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 beastly man. <laughs> <laughs> Abomination, <laughs> <laughs> perhaps. It's true. <laughs> Kessler, you said you would keep that under control. I said I would. I said that you had nothing to fret, and you don't. Wait, so how it doesn't much... seem like you're in charge. <sighs> Seems like you're you're full of the impulses of the beast. Whatever was coming out of that creature was not of this world. It needed to be destroyed, and there was not enough time to act. And so the abomination took hold, and if you don't like that, then so be it. And I turn and begin to leave. Listen, Where are you leaving? that really stressed me out. Mm-hmm. Yes, well, do you anyway. know what stretches me out? The idea that you, someone who seems to have no regard for the people of the village, someone who pulls his weapon on a man purely trying to do his job, and you, leper, quietly judging with a raspy-ass voice, being a little bitch about everything. I'm not judging. Who am I to judge? You standing there, hoping to to garner favor with the gods. Well, all the gods are dead. I'm living proof of that. And with the blood, warm blood down my chin, I wipe it off, and I go to turn for a door. Whichever Mm. door that is. So there's the door leading out, there's a staircase leading upstairs, which you can only imagine is the main blacksmith's, the forge, perhaps, upstairs. All right. And I and I angrily go to leave to that door and uh, begin heading upstairs. All right. So the three of you are catching your breaths down in the basement of the blacksmith's, surrounded by bodies and blood. What do you do? Uh, search the bodies. Mm. For anything. 
Targul, as you make your way around searching the bodies, most of the cultists have nothing on them. Some strange pentagonal tattoos, uh, but one of them, the one that you remember being vanquished by the abomination, is wearing an amulet. Hey, this one's wearing an amulet. And I toss it to the abomination. Take this. Before I leave, I grab it without turning around. <laughs> I walked in the door. No, when he calls don't me, eat. when he calls don't me, eat it. and I, uh, <laughs> I take it and I exit. I don't know. And I turn, I turn to the other two, and I say, "It makes him feel like he's more part of our team. He is, but." He seems to need to be told that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I get it that you're trying to, you know, be the glue for us, but and he just ate off ate a thing. Like now that's inside of him. We have to I watch know. out for that too. We have to watch out for the abomination and the tentacle thing inside of him. This is a lot to handle. I know, it's quite disturbing. I'm very stressed. And if there's anybody that should be what's holding us together, it's certainly not me. I know, or me. Vestal, come on. Speak up. <laughs> I knew this was going to be a challenge. I had no idea what really resides within Kessler, and I still think I'm only seeing the beginning. But if he changes like that again and he loses control... I need to know that you guys will all help me in, in stopping him before he causes too much damage to himself and to those around him, including us. I asked Targul and I asked I'm for... Uh, always here Arbolus. to assist. And then I... Um, to see me. I take a, a, a time to, um, to actually heal a little bit of my stress. I try to meditate and clear my mind of the frustration and anger after Kessler just denounced my gods as being dead and him being evidence of it. So I take a moment to realize that that was not him. That was the anger that bubbles deep within. And I uh, resolve my stress by um, three points. Resolve? What? Oh, you're yeah, skill. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to use my shepherd. Uh, <laughs> like, Chris, you can't just do that. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I feel good about gold. this. I'm going to bring my health up 20 points. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Uh, so, um, <laughs> I'm going to spend, I'm gonna spend, okay, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna spend uh, nine points. Spending nine points. All right. And uh, let's just do a recap. How is everybody's uh, health? Or how's your magic doing, first of all, Chris? I have I have a total of four points left. Four points of magic. Uh, the other three. How are you guys doing for health? Uh, I haven't uh, lost any, so I'm good. Nobody's lost any. Nope. Same as these. Nope. Hmm. My stress level's at six. Yes, yeah, stress. Yeah, six. Six. Harlan. Um, for stress. Yeah, I would circled so many different ones. Oh, five. Five for stress. Yeah, because I was at eight, and then he dropped me down to three. Remember, he healed me three. Right, yes, yes. Yo, yes, trust okay. me, yo! Okay, so okay. Do you get, right, do you right, get right. stressed from turning into the Abomination? Oh, that's a good point. I don't know. No, he doesn't get stressed for turning into it. Just you guys do. Cool. Oh, okay. Thanks. But you know what, in all fairness? I feel like they should each reduce the stress because I didn't fully transform. I only did, like, half. I kind of was thinking, like... Well, it's your call, but I, I just think, like... GM? It was what more do you like say? the snout yeah. that came out and, like, and then and the claws, and then it sort of receded. I'm going to say that it's the actual transformation process. Um, like, that you didn't transform into a wolf. I think that the actual like transformation is... like, my skin is... didn't fall off, and, like, my the spikes didn't start coming out. Like, it was sort of like, don't get me wrong, I still think it should be two because of the heart and because mm. of the partial transformation. I'm just saying three. I, that's totally your call. Just saying. I mean, you could also say the argument afterwards was kind of stressful as well, so... <laughs> I guess. <laughs> well, we'll leave it the way it is. We're gonna leave it the way it is. I didn't mean to um, mind you. I'm no, sorry I'm right. picking on you, Arlen. No, not at all. It was a good. I don't regret it at all. 
Okay, Kessler okay. is a complicated character. He fights yeah, his inner demons. Sure. He's trying to understand them, but they're also taking control of them. You know? And as I... you're thinking of all these things, as you make your way upstairs, you push open uh, the, the basement hatch and find yourself in a dusty forge. Looking around, the just uh, beams of light from outside and little bits of mist are smoking and wisping into the room. I've already entered it, I'm assuming? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I do, I'm going to do perception when I walk in because I feel like we don't we haven't really been doing that much. Do you have your torch? I got <clears> everything, <throat> baby. 12. I'm going to grab some of the candles um, from the cultists or whatever they were lighting the room with. So I'm going to have an extra torch. Excellent. Just filled with fireflies. Okay. So at a, with a 12, you managed to see... Uh, so I'm something glittering in the corner next to the a desk where maybe or a workbench. Okay, I walk over. Mm. And lying on the floor, dusty, you see ten coins. Hmm. No one else is in the room, right? No one else I is scoop in them up, the place them in my pocket. All right. And the other three who are downstairs. Um, Alex, you were searching the bodies. Uh, Wolfgang and uh, everyone else. Arbalest, what are you doing? Uh, I want to actually see the medallion. I'm curious about uh, the significance. So as soon as they get into the room, I say, uh, Kessler, may I see the chain that was thrown to you? Perhaps I can decipher some of its meaning. I don't know. <laughs> what does it look like? Uh, holding it, actually, does it, does you feel very unsettled, almost sluggish holding it. Um, and it looks like a... Um, it's like a bloody cube. A cube with spikes sticking out of it. Really? So it's basically Hellraiser. <laughs> Yeah, but you can wear it around your neck. And For small. pleasure and pain. Um, <laughs> I guess, yeah, yeah, okay. Don't All throw right. it too hard. Did I steal money last game? I think you did. You didn't steal it. Well, I, th I think you did find some money and then you kept it to yourself. I thought there I was did something too. with that. I said that. Did I? Okay, so I guess I got to keep it 10. It's funny because I was thinking, it's like, okay, I'll, I'll give these guys goodwill. But I guess my character is already stolen stuff, so, which I, I was not aware of. Um, yeah, you know what? I Okay, yeah, I'll walk over. Sort of. Let me I'm just not take a look pissed at it. off, because I'm not I pissed off at you. Me. I just, well, I want to make this clear. Not that I'm saying in character, but this is my actions. It's not that I'm, I'm I'm upset at you. It's more the frustration of of when the abomination comes out of me, how good it feels. You know, it's sort of like it's like indulging those feelings, and it's a constant struggle of whether that's the right version of myself or the version that suppresses it. And when you guys sort of like, yo, you said you wouldn't bring it out, I'm kind of like, well, then maybe that's real fucking me, <laughs> like an angsty teenager. <laughs> so I walk over <laughs> and I hand you the cube, and uh, now I'm sort of Ow. again back to the uh, shyly, not shyly, but sort of like, you know, turning away, and then I uh, I come up into the room and join these three gentlemen and I turn to the the ball uh what's your name the abolisher abolisher abomination abomination Kessler <clears throat> and I say Kessler did you find anything interesting up here in hopes to be the glue that helps <laughs> to bring him back in and uh I don't know I'd be like yeah. Let me rephrase. Probably, no, I'd probably. Did you find mind. anything? <laughs> I would probably give you some of the gold. I'd say uh, I'd probably give you half, actually, because you did give me the thing, and I think I think you're obviously trying. So, I reach in my pocket for the loose change, and I, I pull out five gold pieces, and I say, "Yes, I found this on the table over there." And I give you five. Uh, and I and I put my hand up and say, "Keep it." Did you find anything else of interest up here? Anything that? Any direction you feel we should go? No, no, not uh, not yet. I've only just entered the room. I didn't see another exit, did I? 
Uh, yeah, well, you see the front door yeah. that's boarded up that's from this side, and then the window as well. Didn't we break down the boards? Oh, no, he put his ear to them. That's right. I did a, a magic check on the medallion, and I rolled a 12, unless I get blood magic advantage, which gave me a 14. All right. So, Vestal, you place the amulet in your hands, careful not to let the, the points prick your skin, and immediately you notice that it is actually covered in blood. And you sense that the magic is very much tied into your own style of blood magic. This is an amulet that will, if imbued with your own blood, will increase your vitality, improving your hit points a certain amount. But the effects are draining in a way and make you a little bit more sluggish, more vulnerable to attack. Mm -hmm. I say this 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 item here will um, bolster your strength, but I fear at the cost of your um, dexterity. I think um, should someone want this, I, I have no use for it. It'll up your dexterity, you said. I think it'll slow you. Yeah, it'll slow down your dexterity. Oh, slow down your dexterity. What's the benefit? I missed that. Sorry. You get more hit points. Oh yeah, I don't need it. So I don't know if someone fights with strength and just a tank. And I look over at. The, I do. Mm. But it lowers my hit points. Oh, it increases well, your hit points, points lowers, lowers your dexterity. So actually, it'd be perfect for you because I think you attack with strength, don't you? You're like a tank. Do. Yeah. You In fact, you make a good point. Pass it to me. And I say, in order to use it, however, you need to uh, inflict some wounds on yourself with it. Is that a joke? Mm. Joke. <laughs> what is a joke, Data? <laughs> joke? Yeah. Don't worry about it. I assume you, God-fearing man, don't joke. And I take the the amulet and I immediately start whipping my legs and back with it. Well, not that as much. It, as it leaves sharp gouges in my skin. Yes, okay, and you whip your back and you feel the blood <laughs> pouring out, and um, uh, you <sighs> feel a connection. You, you feel a little bit more sluggish, but you do feel more energetic, somehow, almost. Somehow the pain, it makes me feel more alive. <laughs> so and whenever you're wearing this, and I put it on this, yeah. You're going to get plus 10%. I want you to use this as a kind of a separate health bar okay. for yourself. So what is your health right now? Like, what's your maximum health? 34. 34. So you are going to get rounded down an extra three hit points. All right. So that's kind of added on. So your, your total hit points is 37 now. But your, um, your defense is going to go down by one point. Okay. So it's only ten. It's only ten. It's Rad, only I'm telling ten, you. Yeah. And that is all. Why all right. do I feel? So you are in the forge. There is a stone forge that looks like it hasn't been operational uh complete in a long time, uh complete with a chimney in the back and a, a stove. Um, there's an anvil in the room, and it looks like there's kind of a, a waiting area off to one side, um, or a storage room. None of us can use the forge, can they? No one was brought up a blacksmith. Huh? Well, it looks like you'd need some uh, materials to actually get it going. You'd need some coal, and you'd need some wood. And... Well, there's boarded up doors. Let's use that. I think you need more to get more heat. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not a yeah. blacksmith. That's why I don't know. <laughs> All right. It's going to be the next question for the stream. In five yeah, words, five what words. is the job description of a blacksmith? <laughs> so blacksmith. how? So this is the front door then. Yeah. Is there anything else? There's a side room. There's a side room to you know, with a closed door. So I turn to the others. Seems like this might be the last room. Are you ready? <clears throat> Vestal, do you sense anything else in here? I'll try. And I get to the door to see if I sense anything. Uh, you don't. 
uh, the magic is, there's still some lingering energy from downstairs, you sense, and a little bit coming off of um, uh, Alex now from, from the, the leper. But as far as this door goes, it doesn't feel cursed or anything. So, uh, knowing this, I, I open the door. You go to open the door and you feel it is, it, it buckles against your... Uh, I see, I see him open the door and I turn to the leper press. and I say... It doesn't open. It doesn't open. I'm sorry. And I see that and I turn to the leper and I say, Leper, do you still have the key? Do. And I retrieve it from my pouch. I think perhaps that would benefit us in the situation. Here it is. And I reach out and I take it and I head over to where the arbalist is. And I hand him the key. I don't really tell him. All right. Arbalist, the abomination hands you this golden key. And taking it, you slip it into the open lock and turn it. And you can feel it turn completely over one way, hearing the gear mechanism inside clicking all the while. And click. It opens. But you feel the, the key uh, something strange about the key and you go to pull it out and it won't come out the mechanism has locked it in place hmm. well that's a stupid key <laughs> what a fucking waste what the heck hey kind of like the hey, shovel leper. you feel leper. like it's broken inside leper get me your broadsword or a long sword tis a place of only one use be wary of the Whorehouse. What? <laughs> so wait, it, it went in, it turned, it clicked, and then it got stuck. Then it got well, stuck. So you... the door is open. Oh, the door okay. Is you use the shovel, it, it's done after four years. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. So the it's keys open. are done it's after open. Okay. I, I, All right. I didn't I buy did that, it was, that open. it was open. Yeah, I thought he, I I thought you used it. And it... I, thought, I thought he used it yeah, and yeah, it got no. stuck. It's you. unlocked. It's unlocked. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, and then I go, oh, okay. So I lost the key. You open the door, and inside is completely dark. It looks to be a storage room. Um, but as the torch light fills the room, you see a few things. Uh, so first thing you see is a bag with some coin inside. There appears to be 30 coin inside. Oh, nice. So All I right. pick it up, and I start divvying it up amongst everyone equally. And... Uh... Wait, what's 30 divided by 4? 7. Now remember that 50% of the coin that you find is to go to the master. The but words it, of Higgins ring Only if he knows about mind. it. <laughs> it's not going to check our pockets. Either, but... We won't tell. We won't Something tell tells me that the master, who's the community, might have an idea of what's going on. No, they wouldn't. They're not God. Okay. Anyway, so I just take it and said, I guess we'll, I divvy it up and say, I mean, keep track of what you guys have, you know, in case the master asks. <laughs> Fucking master. This is, this Not is throwbacks chat. to the Star Wars campaign where it's like in character, or meta, I know that it's the community. So of course I yeah, support yeah. it. But as a character, there's like no reason, you know, in any way. For me to to believe that this all this fucking master that no one gets to meet gets half your coin. <laughs> Same with the Star Wars because remember when we were playing Star Wars, I was like, the Empire doesn't sound that bad. Like from, from hey, no side. attention yeah, yeah. to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. See, I feel like the master <laughs> knew the thirty gold pieces was in there, and he was just waiting for us to retrieve it. So he's like, he yeah. knows where all the money is. Yeah, I guess. Okay, that makes more sense. Let us continue. Yes, indeed, Justin that was my intention that. all <laughs> along, saying. Chris. <laughs> Very astute of you. 20 okay. XP for you. Just kidding. Can I have, can I have coins instead? <laughs> uh, well, it, also inside the room, there is a bust. A, a bust of uh, that's very well-preserved marble uh, that looks to be of the same portrait that you guys saw last time that was hanging in the guild. The same person. The bust of the old master of this hamlet. Who does it look like? It looks like know? everyone. Looks like a bearded man, almost like Socrates. But could also be a woman. But it could also be a woman. I'm going to roll perception <laughs> is, on it. 
<laughs> it could also be young or old. Could also be yeah, a young boy with a beard. No, it, Ooh, 10, 14, and then perception. That's a that's a eighteen roll. All right, so uh, you would recognize that this is an old bust that must have been done sometime in the late 1700s, possibly was even brought overseas and sculpted in Italy. Uh, but And you can tell that it's... Oh, wait a minute. Is... I forgot we're playing a game. I take it. <laughs> I forgot how this game works. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, yes. you take the bust. Okay, cool. Uh, and in, then in last... Darkest Dungeons, you can collect like I totally forgot. Did we take the last one, by the way? Uh, I don't think you did, that's but I'm dumb. assuming that you did. Yeah, we should have. Okay, it's like hanging in the guild right now. That's totally safe. I go, so I go back into the blacksmith room. Anything else I can pilfer and take? Well, I was Any gonna paintings? say there is, uh, you do find some. Oh, damn, this is the wrong page. Uh, you do find something else inside. It's a stone, and it looks like it's... Actually, it looks like it's petrified um, uh, like what? twine or oh. some sort of uh, vine, and it's been wrapped, and there's a yellow star on top of it that seems to glow slightly. Mm. Some sort of trinket. Thank you. Oh, you pocketed it. <laughs> I pocketed it. Okay. You pocket it? Okay. They sit uh, upon my pouch. So the others do see. The others do see the 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 stone as well. This is and all you in know the what? storage. I room. let it go because like Leper's been pretty cool to me. So I, I kinda I see it and I just I turn around. Oh, oh I'm not hiding it. I'm willing to give it to whoever, but oh. simply to move along. We must clear the blacksmiths. Hopefully. I think we have. If we continue yeah, through these clear. halls, I don't know. we what can else disenchant the front door. <clears throat> is the blacksmith clear? It looks as though all the rooms in the back blacksmith is clear. Though, the room that you did, or the door that you did bust down in the basement was, well, it's completely broken. And now it's just an empty hole for whatever it may be lurking all the in the abbey. The abbey. So the in. door that we just opened with the skeleton key was just a door and there was a bust in there it's a and that's treasure it? treasure chest, yo. We got money. Yeah. We got, we got, we got money. I mean, we got nothing. a trinket. It was like yeah, a I don't remember playing Wolfenstein, okay. Alex, and it's like, yo, what the guy, what was the guy I guarding? Was, now I was just picturing a hallway. <laughs> so I, didn't, I wasn't thinking a closet. So, okay. Yeah, it's Thank a closet. You. Oh, I was thinking okay. a room, but. Like a storage room so, closet. I was thinking of Wolfenstein. <laughs> and... how, how can we disenchant the front door? And... Should we do anything about the basement? Maybe proceed to the abbey. I believe the door is safe now. Then proceed to the front door and open it. See? Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, well, the, well, the front door is boarded up. Right. But it's... Uh, I say it's, it's now safe, but I believe we need to proceed to the abbey to clear it now. As I well, agree. Because we have no way of preserving it unless we take the boards from the door to barricade the wall. No. But I think we should go to the abbey. That's sloppy work. Uh, I think no, I I tend to agree. And then, then perhaps we, we might want to go back though to the uh, unless we do camp, the abbey maybe? right away, and then that way there's no. <clears throat> Let's okay. go back to the fork. Walk, 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 walk. Are we back at the fork? You just fucking snap. Okay, so you make your way back down. No, I wasn't snapping at you. Okay, but for the record, we're out. We no longer have a uh, shovel or a uh, key. That's right. You'd have to go back to the provisioners to get more. How long would it take for the next that? expedition? Uh, it would take. Not very long. Uh, you'd have to take down the boards, or you'd have to go back around the way you came. Let's press on to the abbey. Let's let's press okay. on to the abbey because I think I think realistically we can try to board this up. But if we rest at home and come back tomorrow, then it's possible that everything we've just done today is for naught. All right. Agreed. And as you begin exiting the room, you hear a knocking at the front door on the boards. Uh, hello? Hello? I, I hear voices. It's, it's not the same voices as before. Is it? Is it the four of you? It's the scout. The mercenaries? It's a scout, I think. Yes, it's, it is our scout. Uh, I'm assuming it's it's safe. Can, can we send the workers to come and revitalize the blacksmiths? Yes, of course, it is safe. And we're moving on to the abbey. You don't happen to have any provisions on you that we could take? Uh, I, I have only but some, some food morsels. Yes, Nothing we else. will. Thank you. 
<laughs> you will take the food. Appreciate it. Uh, very well. And he, you see something slide <laughs> under <laughs> under the boards. It's all about confidence, guys. Scout. Scout. When you bring the workers to revitalize the blacksmiths, do us a favor. And for the time being, seal the door to the basement. You needn't have anything come after we leave. The door, the door to the basement. Uh, yes. Yes, I will do that. Is there anything else? No. All right. So with that, <laughs> the uh, you hear footsteps outside the door. And you can also hear the soft pitter-patter of rain mm. as you make your way back down into the basement of the blacksmiths. Now, as you approach the door, the doorway leading back into the catacombs, a chill runs through your body and the hairs stand on the back of your neck, almost as if a gust of warm breath has just pushed out from the dark hallway and has washed over all of you. Hmm. Vestal, do you see anything? Do you feel anything as we approach the abbey? Justin, do I feel anything? You step towards the darkness, listening intensely, reaching out magically as you did before. And looking into the darkness, you s don't see anything, but you think you might hear some very soft breathing. And oh. just as you're about to relay this to the others, you hear a mad cackling <laughs> and a pitter patter of feet run deeper down the hallway Jesus towards Christ. the abbey. Did it sound like a small? No, it sounded like the crazed voice of a lunatic. Oh my God. Just what I needed to clear my mind. It could be a lost soul we need to, to help out of here. Yes. Oh, he's Help trying to them. think of the best, eh? Give me something I can shoot. Sorry. I say we chase it. Hunt them down. Yes, we should follow. Agreed. And we and with that, that, start running into the hallway to follow. Yes, them. with that agreeance, you take your steps into the darkened abbey towards the darkest abbey no you take you start walking towards the you start walking through the hall <laughs> towards the the abbey the darkest dungeon of the abbey and that's where we're gonna end it tonight <laughs> the abbey is a long and complex building filled with many different hallways i'm sure if we started it now it would have been i was kind of sussing that out too Maybe we should have gotten back for provisions. <laughs> Can we turn around now and go back, please? Now that we heard the news, now that we heard the news, the plot. <laughs> Thank you so much to Mr. Justin oh. Thomas James. This has been Darkest Dungeon Return. <laughs> what? Part two. Thank you. Thank Excellent you. job. Part two of the Darkest you, Dungeon. Excellent job to Justin. Excellent job to the players tonight. And excellent job to you, the community. A big round of applause for you, my friend. <laughs> Um, this has been a blast, and uh, we've had a, a ton of new people hanging out. We've had a ton of new people join the Facebook group lately. Uh, so thank you guys for hanging out with us and, and chatting along and making this uh, such a fantastic thing to, to do and to experience on a, on a Wednesday night. Hump day, as they call it. And uh, it's, it's sex-filled. Let me just put mm -hmm. that one. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, though, the game's not over until we do end game XP. That's right. It's the person or persons although it hasn't been persons yet, uh, who most earned uh, the Endgame XP by commenting or helping or giving a bit of advice or, or anything like that. So first, Justin, I'm going to ask you, was there anyone maybe in preparation of the game that might have aided or gave suggestions mm. or anything that maybe someone spent XP on that was... Working? Definitely, yes. As far as um, uh, in preparation of the game, definitely uh, Kellen... Holman, yeah, Kellen Holman was very, very uh, engaged in the entire Darkest Dungeons uh, process. He spent some experience points uh, to um, uh, spend coin as the master on Chris, and he did the whole thing in role playing. So I suggest that he gets uh, endgame XP. 
All right. Then you know what? I think he's gotten it before, but hey, if you earn it, you earn it. We're going to give it to Kellen. Thank you, Kellen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Way to go, Kellen. <laughs> well, you know what? Kellen, uh, through and through, has been one of the more recent but active and extremely uh, helpful and kind members of the stream. So, Kellen, you just get a, a massive shout-out for being cool, dude. And yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Um, so, uh, so yeah, uh, thank you so much for hanging out. This has been Darkest Dungeon Part 2. Next week, we are back with Feng Shui Part 2, where we see the return of Jack, BB, Kim, and Seafood. <laughs> seafood. <laughs> seafood. Uh, the four crazy action stars. It's going to be crazy, crazy fun. Um, you're welcome, Mike. That was a great game. You don't know who David is, so please pass it on. David, they don't know who you are, so pass no, it on. No, on Discord. It was just not on Discord. <laughs> I don't know. I know. I was just passing it along. Oh, on David on Discord. That's fair. Yeah, Mike says way to go, David. And thank you for David for hanging out. We haven't seen you in a while, buddy boy. Yeah. 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 The, I sweet just... the sweetest little fish in the world. You gonna go? Uh, you gonna smoke your pipe now? No. Have you smoked Fresh it yet? Weed and all the yeah. Fat. Yeah, no, of course. Nice. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, got some, some tobacco. Anyway, you got some what? <laughs> tobacco. But you don't smoke tobacco. tobacco. Yeah, so you're smoking a pipe. Yeah. So what? <laughs> what? Okay. It's like, I got it the like heroin needle, so I might as well do it. <laughs> it's like smoking a cigar. <laughs> I'm not yeah. against it. I'm just saying he doesn't smoke. It's funny. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, next week, Feng Shui, please come by. And as my best friend Chris always likes to say, I'll see you around the table. We will see you around the table, guys. Good night. <laughs>